as well as opportunities to think and act differently. Technology came in handy in many ways, keeping track of the health of people, vaccination across masses, doing business using technology were all aided by digitalization. Though Maruk Suzuki is a manufacturing company, COVID brought forward many areas where we could use technology and digital. Communication among team members was extremely critical. We rapidly implemented video conferencing tools to counter the challenges and concerns put forth by lockdown and the new normal of work from home. The communication platforms help to establish employee connect and assure them that we are together in this. So in a way, despite of lockdown in many states, there was no lockdown on the communication within Marquise. Technology also helped us to train and upskill employees at home during the lockdown. And it is evolving even today. This is a living example of how we turn challenging situations to our advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, the world and the business realities have been changing at a rapid pace. Technological advancement and digitalization have altered the way we operate. We have seen a shift of traditional ways of coming to the workplace to work from home or a hybrid working model. The expectations and aspirations of employees are also evolving with changing global business environment. Having operated in a super world, which stands for volatile, uncertain, complexity, and ambiguous, it's fair to say we are shifting towards a funny world. We, or we, robust from outside but fragile within, can corrupt the A for un anxious, fear that any choice we make might be the wrong one. N for non-linear, no standard relation between a cause and effect. And I for incomprehensible. Countless data, but cannot make anything out of it. All these changes mean that companies must relook and reassess how they operate. People practicing that work ten years back may not be relevant today. Ladies and gentlemen, I strongly believe that employees are the biggest asset for any organization. While many people talk about technology giving them the competitive edge. I see it as a tool to empower our team. Business must always be people-centric. While technology will help us make better decisions, it is people, their involvement, their communication and collaboration, and their engagement that will provide a competitive edge to us. So let us keep focusing on people. It is people who will accept the courage, drive the change, and take the company to greater heights. Therefore, let us keep our people motivated, engaged, and happy at all times. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Kishan, for adding value to the session today. It is said that we cannot do great things always, but we can always do small things with great love and deep gratitude. So, as a token of respect, we would like to present a small sapling and a book to our keynote speaker today. To do the honor, I would like to invite upon stage Mr. Subhanallah. A huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. May I now again request Mr. Siddiqui to please join us on the stage and introduce our next speaker for today. Thank you, Sajid Khan, uh, for that very, very simple, very, very passionate view uh, on uh, the subject today. Yes, as Sajid Khan was mentioning our uh, 40 year celebration uh, in the month of August, 4th week, was directly being spearheaded by Sajid Khan, being responsible to our former chairman, Mr. Osama Sinti, our current global president, Mr. T. Sinti, and our former director, almost. Uh, Big dedication coming from Japan. So, and the first event in Gujarat was kicked off by none other than the wonderful Prime Minister of India, who very moody. So, Prime Minister was handling that part as well there. Everything went fine, and uh, perhaps we are not doing any series of such uh, the kind of events this year to celebrate that occasion. Thank you, Prime Minister. Now, I have the privilege of uh, inviting uh, Mr. Manish Sharma, Chairman of uh, Panasonic India. <coughs> And uh, a little uh, background I just said. He is responsible for driving software growth along with strategy planning and business development for the entire product portfolio of Panasonic consumer, enterprise, and industry business. His career of more than two decades has spanned from hands on operations to strategic product and business planning in various electronic areas like LG Hotline, Samsung India, and AI. He has been appointed to the steering committee of, for advancing local value add and export scale formed by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And has been working closely with the Department of Promotion of Industry and Industry. He enjoys photography and traveling. He is also very active on social media. I believe he has got a big following and has been sharing his thoughts with the followers through the property he can during on LinkedIn. In 2021, he also launched a YouTube platform, Ulogs, to engage in industry leaders and inspiration to the team that family. We are very, very uh, uh, thankful to Panishtan for you kindly accept our advice and we will have a privilege to invite you to share with us in the Panishtan. I take some of the points which you mentioned and also out of this speech speech also there is a presentation which may not be short enough for the audience. I will post it on LinkedIn for your later reference so I will like to run through the presentation because there are some very important points which I will use to follow them up during my speech. So first I will make this presentation and then I will follow up on some of the important points which are touched in the video. This presentation actually I made in the backdrop of a uh, recent pandemic. In fact, uh, this was shared with our internal employees and some of the stakeholders uh, during the COVID was going on during that time. A lot of references uh, might be more suitable for those times, but I believe that uh, they are relevant uh, even while we talk today. So, I point this uh, as the approach leading into evolving times. And as we know that uh, this cliche statement of uh, change is the only constant and I thoroughly believe that the rate of change itself is changing. The change is being accelerated, uh, especially in the backdrop of uh, last couple of years, the way we all have witnessed that how things have changed much more faster. So this is when we pick this up. Uh, this approach is called basic. This approach is called basic, and 
me and my team came together during the times of COVID to uh, sort of define this up. And uh, as, as it suggests, we is about built together to ensure business sustainability. Clearly reflects if you look at the uh, future it has upon the very fact that how we should have an approach which is more inclusive, how do we bring people together, especially in the times of crisis, and how during those times leaders have to ensure that while they lead from the front, they need to have an elective approach. You know, we at Panasonic and I elaborate on our capabilities in subsequent sites, we were found in 1980, roughly about 104 years before in Japan. Uh, the founder of Panasonic, Konosupe Matsushita, happens to be one of my inspirations. And he said that we make people before we make product. And one of his, uh, another words of wisdom was that uh, we need to drive collective wisdom, especially during the times of crisis. So in that backdrop, B is about building together to ensure business sustainability. A is about adapt to new business challenges and Mr. Sriti also spoke that how cutting across variety of things including the interventions of government, the policies are changing fast, technology, the social trends are changing fast and hence the expectations of customers are changing fast. So how do we ensure that we adapt to the new business challenges and the changes in that? F is about uh, still to your leadership style. There will be a variety of situations which you will encounter, a variety of challenges and opportunities, but it is extremely important to stay true to your leadership style, irrespective of how the external environment changes. I is about innovate to power the future. Innovation may not necessarily be about products itself, it may be about the processes also to keep pace with the changing environment. P is very important. This is something which is very close to my heart and this potentially is a reflection of uh, 27 years of my own experience. Uh, this is about three C's. Uh, we call it, uh, you know, this essentially defines uh, any professional, so to say, or any individual. These three C's which I will elaborate in the subsequent slides are character which defines the individual, the capability of the individual and his ability to be consistent uh, in the time. And this is about uh, safeguard the well-being of employees and yourself. I think we find the shows actually touch upon the leader speaker. I will now run through the presentation uh, because it is important to touch upon some of the important topics. I have already touched upon that how we need to come together. I when we reflect back, you know, some of the decisions we can always go back and challenge. And when this crisis started and when the mandatory lockdown was imposed, uh, there were many questions which. Uh, uh, people in the position of responsibility were encountering. And uh, as I said, we can look back and challenge our decisions, but I think the top priority that time was to ensure that we keep stakeholders in building on the top of our agenda. And therefore, we did a lot of things, but in the first instance, a very basic form a task force team, a cross functional team at Panasonic to bring people together to take responsibility of uh, uh, deliberating on ideas that how do we, in the first instance, keep people safe and then think about business sustainability. So as I mentioned, it is very important that how do we create collective wisdom of variety of people to come together to form policies which essentially ensure business sustainability, but on the first priority, keep people safe. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, adaptive new business challenges, who would have imagined what has happened in the last two and a half years? And as I mentioned, we in the first instance that Panasonic created a rapid task force uh, team. And then we quickly realigned. Of course, it kept evolving. And I think the evolution was much more faster and uh, drastic than our imagination. But we were trying to realign the organization to the new reality as the time was getting unfolded. And we also were simultaneously trying to understand, and I think we will still continue to have insights coming in that uh, how do we really understand the stakeholder behavior and in this whole sense see the changes that are happening and the necessity to align our capabilities, our processes, policies in line with the changing behavior of the stakeholders. And in this I think in the first instance, employee is the most important stakeholder for the organization and for organizations like us, which cut across the entire spectrum of the supply chain. And I believe this was one of the biggest questions which was running through the minds of people like me. Because uh, the concept of uh, work from home immediately got initiated as we went into mandatory lockdown. 
And the question which I believe, as I said, that if you go back in time, you can challenge your own decision. The big question which was running through my mind, for example, was that there were people even at that point of time, and we being a company into a variety of spaces into supply chain, <clears throat> from manufacturing to operations, to field operations, to after sales service. The big question was that uh, what approach should we take? Should we take the approach of sharing our shoulders with people who are walking into the market to provide after sales service? for people who require services for their air conditioners, refrigerators, because the first lockdown happened back in the middle of the summer season. So, should we be into operations, into back office functions, into headquarter functions, also share our solidarity with those people who are getting into factories to start production after the mandatory lockdowns are over, walking into the field, and also we also get into our office spaces, or ensure that we keep the remaining set of people safe and let the people who have mandatory functions to go out of their homes. But as I said, when we look back in time, we can challenge our own decisions. But we took a phased approach to restart our operations to ensure business continuity while keeping employee wealthies on the top of our agenda. Again, I think uh, Adil Tusan also spoke about this. It is extremely important to bring people together. Enable a dialogue at all times, whether in the situation of a crisis or when the normal times are going on. And uh, in this, it is extremely important to pray, uh, stay true to your leadership style. And we at Panasonic uh, over the last about 14 years, in some sense, why we have existed for about 50 years in this country. We officially came in 1972 to establish a joint venture to manufacture glasses back in the Gujarat. But uh, in a larger sense, 2008 was re entry of Panasonic in the country. And since then, three pillars have stood tall to define the culture within Panasonic India. And those three pillars are localization, not necessarily about products itself, but about people capabilities. Then, second is rich communication. And third is harmonization. So, taking those three pillars, we have empowered our people to take their decisions, responsibility, and authority in our organization. All this goes backwards. And that is the leadership style which we have tried to inculcate amongst uh, the leaders who work at Panasonic. Again, I think uh, yeah, so I kind of skip this. Many of us understand. Uh, I think Mr. Siddiqui also spoke about this. Innovation is not necessarily only about the product. But during the recent times, how we felt the necessity to accelerate digital capabilities both for supporting the product and also communication. So it is extremely important to consistently look at innovation to ensure that we stay relevant in the changing times. It's a very important subject and uh, you know when people like us, uh, I come from a background in Today, the fraternity mostly here is coming in from manufacturing background. I started my career in 1995 with a manufacturing facility. Uh, MC was coming up with a joint venture at that time. So, in some sense, factories and manufacturing facilities are very close to my heart. But when I look at where I am standing today, from factory to leading an organization into sales and marketing into operations, you know, looking back into my own experience, we try to create a framework. And we did a lot of deliberations, uh, you know, collected a lot of insights, did a bit of small research to understand what it takes to define a professional, what it takes to define attributes which define a professional. So these are the, this is a small framework of those three things three, 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 which potentially defines a lot of people like me. So essentially it is about character. We have to understand that uh, what is that character which defines us uniquely. And within character, again, I try to understand that what is this, what are the attributes which define an individual. And again, looking at experiences of people, and I'm sure many of you would be able to relate with that. Essentially, it is about three things. It is about the ambition which we carry, the aspirations which we carry. Second is during situations of uh, uh, testing times, how much of resilience do we demonstrate? And finally, humility, irrespective of whatever position one reaches, how much of humility one practices. So within character, it is about ambition, resilience, and humility. And second is about capabilities. This is extremely important. And I believe we are living in a socially connected age, digitally connected age, especially in the backdrop of a couple of decades of digital convergence. It is extremely important to look at ourselves every now and then, to, to, to look at ourselves every now and then, that how we are upgrading our skill sets, 
and capabilities to remain relevant in the time. And here I believe the necessity is to ensure that we declutter because there is so much of information which is coming in and ensure that we take an approach which is systematic to consistently upgrade our skill sets and hence capability. And therefore I use the word consistent. Both building of character and building of capabilities should be done consistently. So those are the three things which I thought I was going to bring down. <coughs> I know this. Yeah. The best can be And I think we, yeah, so we spoke about this and I shared some of the examples of the recent time. How we at Panasonic ensure that we, and I'm extremely proud to share with all of you that uh, why we are a large organization, having roughly about 10,000 uh, employees in the country. We operate out of uh, 11 facilities to manufacture our products in the country. A wide footprint of uh, uh, operations in the field, also the 39 branch offices. Because it can, there can be no policy which can cut across all the people within the country cutting into a variety of operations. So, therefore, we brought people together to ensure that the foreign policy is initiative. Uh, we divided our offices into various uh, different zones. So, several initiatives to keep the uh, well being of uh, our people. And this was a collective exercise. We need to bring in ideas, and not necessarily, as I said, during the situations of adversities of crisis, but even normal times, we need those insights, those ideas to come in from people who are into operation. Next slide, please. I have already spoken about this. Uh, we are a diversified technology company in the country. Uh, we are so many of us know Panasonic as a consumer development brand, but it is largely into B two B solutions. I'm extremely happy to share with you that our automotive solution is extremely proud to partner with Maruti Suzuki also. Uh, I'm extremely thankful for your support. Next slide, please. This is a very important slide. Uh, I believe my role in this organization is to create an environment, a culture, which lets people explore their capabilities to the fullest. And this is a program which we started. We call this program Vibrant Panasonic. This is the program which we started roughly about eight years before. And today we can feel proud of looking back and telling the world that when we were talking about this subject five years before. So when we started this program, the first objective was, and as I said, we are a diversified product company. So one of the challenges was that how do we bring people uh, into a variety of different business divisions and functions together? To work for a common cause to position Panasonic in a position which it truly deserves. So the first initiative was to enable opportunities for people to engage. And those are like very standard opportunities for people to come together and engage and share information with each other. Then after about three to four years, we realized that we need to take it forward and ensure that the changing time to ensure well-being of people, both physical well-being and emotional well-being of people within the organization, both into manufacturing and into operations. And then, eventually, from here on, uh, potentially in the next three to four years, our intention is to start to measure the happiness portion of the organization. And in one sense, I've set a deadline of 2025 to begin these initiatives. And then we will continue to let people engage and also organizations' responsibility to care for their well-being uh, in the organization. Exactly. These are only some of the glimpses. This is how we carry out our value Panasonic program, cutting across uh, all the uh, operations. Next slide, please. This, these are some of the glimpses of factory. Uh, it is extremely important, uh, and I believe this is the place where the energy is. And quite often, people like me uh, getting back into the factory find their source of energy. And uh, uh, we carry out a lot of uh, Sessions to engage with people on the left of the country. Sambar session, I think this is the most important one, where we engage with uh, uh, the workers in the factory to enable a two way communication. You know, communication cannot be one way. It is extremely important to consistently enable two way communication. And this has worked wonders for us, not only to uh, keep people happy uh, or satisfied, but also to incubate a lot of ideas, both into IR domain and also into product and process improvement domain. And then uh, we carry out a lot of uh, initiatives. It's a very standard, I'm sure, for many organizations. We have learned a lot from organizations like Manuki Suzuki. So, and then we have a HR Health Desk, and we also have a lot of committees you know, uh, within the factory to ensure that, again, the dialogue is uh, something like two way communication. Uh, 
Uh, we have a lot of space at our factories, as I said, we have 11 factories in the factory, so we will enable a lot of sports events and opportunities for people to come together. And then there is one event which I personally look forward to, which is the annual family day, which is uh, a lot of people coming together, all the employees and their family and their friends coming together and celebrating the annual family day. We've been doing this for the last many, many years, and as I said, something which I personally look forward to. I that will be on our side. As I said, I find a lot of inspiration from Mr. Kuranthu Kuranthu who is the founder of uh, Paris Forum. These are some of the words of wisdom. I take just one more moment to uh, read them out. The first one is very, very important and believe it inspires a lot of people, including myself. Human potential is limitless. This is the first one. The second one is again very relevant to the conversation which is happening today. We produce people and we also produce electrical goods. So I think that was his focus on enabling people's centric capability and processes for the organizations to stay relevant. And uh, the third one is start a new day every day. So, you know, we quite often, and I conclude my talk here, we quite often hear that in our civil past, I also mentioned that we Thank you for sharing your insights on leadership and now more popularly known as the basics of leadership. To felicitate Manish, I would uh, request upon stage Mr. Rajesh Hindu, who is the member of executive board of Maruti Suzuki and also the chairman of Maruti Suzuki Exercises, Amish Kumar Day Memorial Trust.
multinational companies with diversified interest in infrastructure, heavy engineering, manufacturing, IT technology, and financial. Before I hand over to Nathan, I think there are in our tribe there are two great foundations, and we all know about it. One will be Mr. S. V. Nathan, and you will see the rest of six years, and the other will follow the three later Mr. S. V. Nathan. Enjoy the session. I will be forward. It is an honor and pleasure to be here with you all again for a kind of moment. So good morning, everybody. I I thank you for inviting us to the Finnish Space Memorial Lecture. That an inspiring organization such as Maruti has taken upon itself. Keep the memory of a niche behind the thought provoking memorial lectures is great. Please salute to all the leaders in the media and especially Mr. Siddiqui. On the mic, and especially Mr. A, a very, very big salute to the leaders of Maruti who are here today. Very fact that Siddiqui who has, for all these years, has taken a special care to have a lecture series of this sort to keep alive the memory of what is important to us in the late history. Great testament both to him and to the organization that has been part of this part. I wish to begin by saying that 90% of people who come to meetings, particularly memorial lectures, they greet even as they sit where they are. The dream of things, which has got nothing to do with what's happening on stage, the good news is the balanced 10% are in this room. The topic to hand is uh, future of industrial relations, competitive edge, digitization, transformation. A very, very heavy topic. Very heavy. So I've been asked to make light of this topic, so I'm going to do my best. Uh, I'm a moderator for your session. Now you can easily make out who is a moderator, because one thing that happens is. They choose a moderator who knows nothing about the stuff. So that's his first qualification. Second qualification is a moderator. By the way, the moderator is only for this session. Huh? The other moderators will probably have much better. Um, I don't know whether you've noticed, there are two PhDs on this diet. I'm not. So I think they chose well. Tell you something again about the moderator. The moderator is a person who will keep nodding his head very ever so often. Because that's a great way to pretend that he understands what is going on. He has no clue, but he just wants to look very respectful. You will find that I will do a lot not. I'm going to speak a little bit about the industrial revolution 4.0. 
So I'm going to read off a text that I ripped off from Google. You can also do this. But I'll pretend that these are my lines, so please hear me. Disruptive digital technologies will transfer manufacturing by 2025. The period is called the fourth revolution. In comparison to the third industrial revolution, the fourth will have a higher impact despite only limited replacement of equipment. So we are really talking about productivity in really large measures. High level of operational effectiveness. The specific spoke about competitiveness in the market. So this is where that sets. will happen is it is the biggest structural change that you would have seen in the last 200 years. Transformation is a very different order. Principles are as follows. One, think value, not technology. Think people, not tools. Know your stage. Focus on your time. What you root of all of this is that manufacturing know that this is happening right across whether this is services or any part of any sector that you can think of there is a transformation that is happening. Organizations are getting transformed. Um, in this fast changing world a company's competitive advantage and the life cycle that starts with innovation scales up the production and be quickly exploited for revenue. So there is a what is known as a transient competitive advantage that is a cost. So let me give you an example. So before we had the iPhone and the or the Android phones, we had a voice phone, we had a digital camera, a digital video, a recorder, we had all those. But then somebody came up with the idea that you can push all of this into one PDA. And that was an exchanging. It transformed all of what happened around us. Then, 20 years ago, we had to push out an information to just 2 million people or even 1 lakh people. It was almost impossible. You post something on Twitter, if it happens to catch the imagination of people, you could reach billions of people in a second. That's the kind of transformation that you're seeing, digital transformation. That's the competitive edge. A smartphone got smarter, and that is what. Last one I have to things in three. So there are three levels of digital transformation. One is about operation, product, services, and the digital business model. Of what I have is a lot of interesting ideas. And by the way, they don't reside with me, they reside with no gentleman on my way. What I, what I do is, I will be screaming to one of them. Check that out. Is that in their opening remarks, I pick up the first side track. You know, it's a bit really checker. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I mean, after the robot, the uh, second side, so okay. Thank you, Dr. That's <clears throat> all. One thing I do. Thanks to the ZD, sir, and thanks to everything I am, and everybody else who made it. That's super, right? When you feel that for somebody you have a memory of lecture and it's going on for years, I mean, as I'm in charge of one of the largest countries, I also feel that this is something incredible. I think before I start, I, I need a lot of. Yeah, I need to make my family Thank you. Uh, coming back to the second part of it. Whatever the first 10 sentences Nathan told about himself, ignore it. They are not true. He is a naughty uh, moderator. I have already told Mr. Jay Kumar, please be careful. He both of them had something. So I told whatever he asked, 
we'll have that cow and uh, uh, coconut story. We'll check on it. So we'll do it that way. So that's it. But all the credit to him. He's an excellent narrator. So I am very happy to have you here. So let's just give my opening address. Very few. I think, I think probably every day everybody keeps on asking. I mean, I think that question must come in. Ask to many of the people. The moment I ask from intercommunication come, everybody asks, is it relevant today? Because we have more going on the car side of it. And what is uh, what is exactly I uh, so that's where I think the, the base starts. Let me tell you one thing, uh, I, mean, I will start with uh, the four values that uh, we in general have, and a few of them already are gonna talk about. Care, innovation, passion, and trust. We believe in these four core values and they define what industrial relation. You have to have trust. And if I go in any way, you have to have trust light to maintain that relationship which is required for treating your organization. Uh, why why is that? We always, always feel that uh, uh, unions or, or collectives. Are, are a no no for us, no. As, as I want the, the executives or to be developed, the same thing needs to be also done for the non executives and others who are part of your establishment completely. And look at it now. I don't know. I think the whole world is talking about moonlighting today. Is it not, not an IR issue? It's an IR issue. Talks about technicality. I think I may probably come somewhere in the, down the line. If I uh, give it a chance, I would like to speak more about that. But this is unless that's how if an organization has to have competitive edge, it has to manage its IR well. It cannot only be learning and development. It's important. Everything is important. It has to have all the legs up and uh, and establishing the entire and entire organization on both legs so that you don't have a disturbance at any, any point of time. So my opening statement to conclude will be that uh, I am having an industrial relationship is relevant, will remain relevant forever and it will definitely add to the competitive edge for any company if the Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I, I did notice that there are a lot of students in the in the backdrop, in the background. So this is something which will. And I I think all of you are useful. The first useful information that you have. Uh, uh, Hello, brother. All are going. Okay. So the first uh, useless information that I have is the word boss comes from this word, that word called boss. And I didn't understand all this. So you look at Ajit, a great villain. He always say boss. Now you know where the boss comes from. It's a Dutch word. So that's the most important useless information of the morning. I'm now going to pass this on to CGK, but before I do that, one more piece of useless information is that 41% of the people who search for another job do so when they are in bed. So with this, CGK, back to industrial relations. Thank you, Madam. I will keep this with both of you now. Uh, respected uh, leaders from Maruti. Industrial leaders, maybe top uh, faculty members, students. I think they have to be here. I represent a couple of stations from the ASIN Bureau, uh, which is a 21 million USD organization, predominantly to UPC infrastructure, high tech manufacturing, and other services. The last two, two and a half years pandemic, we all, we all went through that. And a lot of mention was there in the earlier. Imagine uh, March 2020, suddenly one day there's a lockdown. 
We have more than 250 locations across India and abroad. More than 3 of black workers. Project site doesn't even have a fence, it is all open. You have missionaries spread across. Suddenly, one day you have to close down and you have to get support to make this. First and foremost, as slightly what Panasonic was talking about, we had to form a high power committee. We had regional committees. We looked at the immediately at the safety and welfare of the people and all the workers arranging food, the foundations, and we had against such a massive, massive way. Then after the first we started being an EPC, building roads, bridges, tunnels, uh, idle projects did not work from home. We have to be at the project site. And uh, eight, that's another nice dilemma which came, spoke about. The work started whether the leadership team should sit at home or whether we should go. When I look at 80% of our people are working at Project and hardly 15 to 20 percent are office based. And we sit at home and say, You people go and work in sites, which is 40 45 degrees temperature, and you have so much of fear and anxiety to be at the office. But for some people, we gave consideration. We set as a role model, we went to office. Actually, during this period, both productivity was low. But fortunately for us, we backed a couple of orders during that period. More than 35,000 more lakhs. For us, we have an order backlog of more than 4,000 lakhs. So that the high speed rail one project is in the So the biggest challenge was how do we execute these jobs hmm? with profitability, with reducing the cost, uh, improving the efficiency, productivity, and timely completion. And you know, most of the GPC jobs are good. L1. So the, the cost is a big, big factor. Born into a digitalization in drive was the Nathan said. It is not because everybody has gone into digitalization, it is because we have to reduce cost and bring in efficiency. There is no other way but to attain to digitalization. Whole amount of uh, it's a vision of our leadership. We thought because of pandemic, much before we started, uh, quickly get some of the examples. We have a whole lot of mystery in the products, like from trains, hoses, trucks, patching plants. Entire thing is fitted with RFIDs, and then sitting at a command center, you understand the efficiency of each of the machines, the productivity, the equipment, and the entire data is used for analytics, including idle time of this for effective reports. If I take an example of operations, we built a tallest statue, which is 282 meters, Sardar Vallabhai Patel statue. You would have seen the picture as a bronze cladding over there. The more than 3 lakh bronze cladding, which is supported from China, is cladding. How do you locate which the cladding will come at which place? Again, it is technology. So, based on thing you know, at this height, at this place, this is the cladding and where it is available, locating it. So, PTC looks as a predominantly a brick and mortar, but technology has gone inside that. That is where we get the competitive advantage in the Whole lot of examples I can keep on talking, but I will leave it to Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. I have a small request. I do realize that people in the front rows are clapping much louder than the people who are behind. So do you want to take a nice shot of it? Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, very, very quickly, since uh, many of you spoke about online, what are your personal views about online? Okay, you will come to that. That's that's why. Uh, uh, let me let me be very clear on this. Uh, I think it has been taken to the extremes by both sides. This is my personal view. Number one. Uh, when when an organization gives you a purpose, gives you a job, gives you a contract, you are bound by that contract. So that is one way. Technically, it's a very right thing that the people are bound by the contract, which 
most of the people, whether it is with me or the others, also agree that I think they they press there, they do it easy, so they mind about that. So they are right. But at the same time, if I I, I heard a very beautiful thing, if uh, this would not have happened, if uh, some sort of type of moonlighting would not have happened, then infosys would not have been created because somebody during that period did a bit of moonlighting, did something. You have to allow people to have innovation as long as your data data privacy is protected, your conditions are protected. So we have to work on it. We instead of I don't know it must have a very uh, serious reason for uh, uh, Wipro to really uh, take out the other people, but without knowing, without getting into it fully, we should not be jumping. That's my personal opinion. We must create a conducive atmosphere where innovation is exactly innovation is definitely given the due which is to be given. People may be allowed for doing something extra for the extra living. We do it, and somebody was telling that day, I was hearing the somewhere they were telling, okay, if somebody would have driven a cab while working in like that, I know. If you want to drink an oil and is at the at his free time he's driving a cab, do you call it a moonlighting? So that means we ourselves are not really very clear about moonlighting. <clears throat> and and uh, how again my personal opinion is that we have to create a conducive atmosphere without jumping into exhibiting from both sides. Yes, I would never expect that somebody working for me also works for a uh, OMC, uh, OMC, definitely not. There are a lot of uh, issues involved. I can't share my, of course, again, you have to think at what level people are working and whether they are aware of the strategy, they are aware of uh, all the details and what, what is the framework in which they are working. So we'll have to see everything. My, my, my last slide only would be that we are too much jumping into a, into a confusion without really doing the details of it. Well, I have Once upon a time, uh, for me as a very value check, I was working in the evening, I used to go and work with an auditor and I used to learn from a sister and someone. People were talking as if they think to others, right? Suddenly, uh, because of that work from home concept of that, right, it has become a lot of people. And if they are doing it during the office hours, it is the concept of it, then it is my personal thing. So, I some useful information now. The useful information is Tuesday is the most productive day of the week. And now you know why you had this particular session on a way. Uh, one question for our team. And this up here. There are two things that we have on third question. Is it that the one that drives all transmission in time? So, a personal story that you would have of how transmission that occurs in your history of the time. Thank you for asking this. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I think that most of the youngsters who might have heard, it, heard me for some time somewhere, I keep on saying about my three A's, agility, adaptability and alignment and uh, out of that, I mean these are the three things which have stood me the best of the time, if you are agile, if you are adaptable and if you align with the purpose, purpose, your own purpose, purpose of the organization, purpose of the nature, if you align, then I, I think it stands a good step for me and it will stand good in good step for you as well. Coming back to purpose, yes. See, and I, I will tell our stories, in our know, stories, let's say two examples I would like to give. One, one is that definitely, I mean these days, particularly Deloitte's uh, 2020s uh, trend talked about uh, social enterprises. I remember uh, I'm trying to I think 2020 or 2019, but it talked about social enterprises. And we in Indian oil, we uh, we know that uh, we we really value that we are a social enterprise by our build, 
by our nature, by our own purpose. So examples which I want to give, one, one example is that we, uh, uh, we, we started one, uh, one initiative in one of the prisons. Okay, this uh, prison is in Hyderabad. Uh, Hyderabad. So uh, lady prisoners are uh, there. So we know uh, even the prisons have their own ways of uh, uh, engaging them for producing uh, uh, different handicrafts and all other things. So we started an initiative that we got a land from the prison within the prison uh, area and we built a retail outlet of petrol pump which we call it a retail outlet there and this little outlet this uh, is being manned by the lady prisoners from that prison in Hyderabad in, in Sikandrabad actually is it's being manned by that how do how I mean, why it is very close to my heart I mean why it feels really really good uh, and in fact, if I would have been permitted, I would have shown, uh, shown a movie where that the lady Ashia uh, she talks about her life. She's she's a process. She has she had she was uh, uh, sentenced to twenty years of imprisonment, and then all this family life, everything was all not that. But they get relief. How do they go back and adjust to the society? And this is where you know I mean. Why I told you purpose, purpose is, uh, the natural purpose is that we align with the society in personality. And here, these ladies cannot be marginalized or cannot be neglected. And this is where, when she has started working, now she has started earning for herself. And, and, and she also has, has now got a position in the society that she is earning not only for herself, for her children as well. She has four children. Her husband has left her uh, after this incident, but the four children, she is not taking care of them. This is one part of social and the purpose which we are making. But at the same time, why I am happy also, this also aligns with our commercial, that's what we talked about, uh, uh, the community wealth, that uh, talked about uh, uh, a commercial uh, organization. This also works with us because. We have seen this particular retail outlet, once it was commissioned, has been doing tremendous, tremendous uh, sales, rather I must say, we had expected something like 200,000 liters, uh, liters uh, there per month, but we are almost reaching 700,000, that is 700 kiloliters in a month, only because everybody else in the society aligned with this, this particular retail outlet, that was good. That if we are also coming to this little outlet, we are also doing something good for the society. So this is one example of, I mean, I, I have a term for it, uh, and as you will not agree to me, whether that term will be fine. I tell, I tell it, human business model. It's a human business model. Thank you. Yeah, very interesting. Coming to purpose, I strongly believe it, it's, it's, a, it's a great motivator for people to work in an organization. In LIT, for the over the years, our attrition rate has been both going up. So the last year, it slightly went up, and I'm sure it will come up. And we are not, uh, we are not the best of the best day markers. Maybe the industry wise. But what unites the entire thing is the purpose. We are the builders to the nation. We make things that make it better. And surprisingly, we have done engagement. The design working conditions are very, very tough. It's in terms of in terms of heat, in terms of dust, in terms of working on uh, everything. But still, when we look at the engagement score, the engagement score at site was better than the office score. Very, very surprising because it is, it is the just in action, we are a caring organization. People are our prime goal. The first fact, what has influenced me much is the folks in search of meaning. People who have survived the concentration camps and somehow are the people who had a strong purpose behind to come and execute. Thank you. Okay, I hope this, yeah, this really works. So, 
I'm going to give our fireside chat members a little bit of rest. Now, this is a question which is going to the audience, but primarily, I would request the student leaders. Uh, this is a question addressed to you. I'll tell you what you will get. If you get the answer right, you will get one of those precious books that got unveiled this morning. So are you guys ready? I'm ready. Okay, no search, but here is the first question. Um, you are all set. There is somebody there. Help me. Wonderful. Question to you. And the best way, if you got the answer is, raise your hand or stand up and, and then yell. Okay? Drivers Wanted is the slogan of which company? Drivers Wanted. Okay, this goes to the audience as well. Okay, we got one hand up, yes. Quickly, yell. Answer. Oh, that's absolutely correct and you can hand the book over to her. Thank you. The answer is Volkswagen. The answer is absolutely right. The second question, again to all of you. Lamborghini did not produce cars initially. What did they produce? <laughs> Whoever said that first, please stand up and you may kindly hand over. Yes, the answer is correct. They produced tractors. Um, which company first allowed pet dogs to come to work? Yes, 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 yes. Google. No. Amazon is the right answer. Please hand over a book. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Microsoft. Okay, I'll go soft on that. So the answer is incorrect. Sorry? No, 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 no. Oh. No. Uh, did anybody get that right? Any other hand? Yes? I gave the answer. Okay. 79% of people, and this is just not for students, this is for people who are on this side, okay? This is a question to all of you. 79% of the people want what at work? They want this at work. What is that? Money. Money? Wrong answer? Satisfaction. Wrong answer. No. No. Fun. Kindly stand up, sir. The answer is absolutely correct. They want fun and work. Okay. The last question, again, going back to the students, is Blue Ribbon Sports is the original name of which company? Okay, you got that right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Wonderful. Um, this is just to check whether all of us are still dreaming or whether you are still you're not listening to what is happening up here. Uh, we are all having fun. Wonderful. That we have just a few. So, another useful, useless piece of information 27% of our bosses want one of their members to quit. Okay, so the first question from you is How many of the people want their bosses to quit? <laughs> The right answer is, I believe, 82%. <laughs> and, and interestingly, the Gallup study says that 20% of people are engaged at work anywhere in the world. The exception to that are the two companies represented by the followers on my left. Uh, but truly, 
That's the kind of talent that we have. You're looking at transformation. This is what we need to come. Okay, one serious question before I get to it. Any, any other thing is, we have seen manufacturing getting off to two fingers. The quick response from both of you is, how will this transform India? And how will it transform organization? First of all, if you are competitive, cross competitive, you have the quality of talent, and if you can add value to them, definitely you have to have it. And today, with the infrastructure and the quality of talent we have, and we want to start development happening, and I'm sure that the authority services and sector is also. Plus, the government support of Arjun Gambhan, making India. I'll show you this. It is going to be a I'll take it. I just want to give one piece of my mind on that. It's a great thing. If it is getting, if it's coming to India, it's a great thing. As they uh, has also told, uh, it's in line with uh, our reason to make it a manufacturing uh, hub for the entire world. We should be very quick. But I think probably we also have to study, we we'll also have to see that whether we have created those environments so that we really meet those requirements which are expected out of us. So that's one uh, tagline, I mean, one caution which I would like to give before we really start accepting uh, to be a, to be a uh, hub for all. Uh, Manufacturing activities or getting this is coming. We have shown it in in IT. We have really shown it well. We have uh, conducted well. We have delivered well, and that's how the country also has progressed well. And if we can do it in the manufacturing, that's why we wait. But we have created. Uh, very, very quick one. I'm told that we use only 35% of our brain. So, uh, very quickly, for the two of you, what is the one major impact that you believe that the new wage code will have? What major impact? Uh, I think if you bring in the semblance which we have in the semblance of uh, Equity, which we have been raising for five years. I think I don't know whether it is loaded. I know because again, my, my hand is going towards the knee, but I think I am probably thinking at least the gap we saw at one point of time it was uh, it was this way, and then with the uh, whatever we had in between, it was the other way. I'm not naming them, but I think probably new which uh, code is bringing in that parity. In future and uh, making it again a hub for all industrial activities. See, next code is a topic we can talk for two days. Uh, the question is very specific. Uh, if all the benefits, whatever is there, I feel the social security part of it. Because today the, the population aging is going fast, right? You, you, it's out in some of the countries in 90. Our retirement age is 58, and if you have to leave from the balance, you need a social security. We don't have any government support. Now, if there's 50 percent of the wages, and if for that PF and gratuity comes, that will be a big boom to the year. Okay. Uh, so, they already know that I'm on to my rapid fire. So, First question, in any order, if you could see, pass option, uh, one thing, you cannot pass this question, you cannot say pass, because you have to respond. Um, by the way, I don't know whether you notice right through this program, I've just been nodding my head. You didn't notice, right? Thank you. Uh, if there is one thing that you would see, other than money, what would you see? Books. Books. Brains. Others brains. 
Others break. You get only 20% Okay. Um, second, what object best represents your personality? If there is one symbol, one object, what is that one symbol? One object. We just want others to say, I thought I got my smiles. My smile. Smile. Okay, but that's not an object, yeah? Prop. Huh? Prop. Prop. 24 is the sound my mind. 24 by 7. Prop. Oh, that's a nice one. So let me look at some map. Something that represents you. Everybody is giving me hits. Sir. No. No, go ahead. I mean, whichever appeals to you. Let me. I'm not. I, and that's a very good question, actually. I don't know. I'm, I've never thought about it. My table. Table. Oh, that's a good one because that also represents work. That represents fun. Excellent. No, no, it's not excellent, but I think. What the hell you say? Okay, if there is one advice that you want to give to your father, what would that be? And I, what I did you too, I will tell that, learn the technology further. My mother is a very good adapter of technology. She has learned everything. But father is, as, as it is, he is reserved about it. So my advice to him is that learn the technology. Learn how to use the mobile. Learn, learn, technology. How to learn technology. Wonderful. How about you see the Netflix? <laughs> Netflix. Watch Netflix or don't watch? No, try to understand and use Netflix as a use. Ah, use Netflix, okay. What do you not tire of? You're not tired of it. What are you not tired of? I'm not tired of listening to people. I'm never tired of it. Not tired of smiling. Not tired of smiling. All expenses paid. All expenses paid. If there is ticket for you and your family, what place would you go to? I don't want it. I want don't want it for that. My home, home. Home town. Home town is that mean? Ancestral place. Ancestral. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, London. London. He wants to go to London. Okay. Um. What regret in your life other than having me as your moderator? Apparently, <laughs> there's the only regret. I should have used my time much better. Ah. I think. That's that one regret which is still remaining. Well, that's very deep. Thank you so much. Look, look, you know, yeah. Well, I've done a lot more. Lot more. Okay. Um, what organization that you admire other than your own? Organizations like Tatas. Tatas, okay. Say, never I'll say with me. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, I also, of course, uh, this is a fact that everybody may think that way, but uh, other than, you know, I really appreciate that. Excellent. Excellent. Wonderful. Okay, and I think you know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. If your life were a movie and you were a hero, what character in Bollywood best represents you? Priya <laughs> Sir, William. No, but, okay, but any, any actor? Uh, I, I think 
I keep on saying it's a difficult one, but I would have loved to be playing the three roles of Amar Akbar Ah, lovely. Lovely. That would be a comedy. That would be a comedy. And which comedy would you choose? Mostly, I don't know. That's okay. All the money is in there. All the money is in there. Okay, we'll go with that. Uh, this is easy. Binary. Union or no union? Unions. Union. Hundred percent. Union. Excellent. Last question. One thing that you want to change in the HR profession. One thing that you want to change in the HR profession. For me, I would like to bring in more agility in the HR. I think probably we are still sticking on to the old things. I think. If you had a chance, I would like to bring it to Be more, more important in business operations. Be more involved in the business. First parent discussion I ever got so many out of syllabus questions. <laughs> I, I want to thank our wonderful panelists. Put your hands together and all the people. Wonderful. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's quarter past 12 and we have to vacate this page. Thank you. We thank must, you. Before we record, we must also clap for you. Uh,
He was then appointed the principal advisor to the group for a year. He is an alumni of St. Stephen's College and then School of Economics. Welcome, sir. Our first panel member is Ms. Vishpala Reddy. She is the PHRO of Philips for the Indian subcontinent. She spearheads people and planet agenda to support business growth and enable Philips in its transformation journey. She is responsible for HR across market commercial operations, Philips Innovation Campus, Healthcare Innovation Center, Global Business Service and Factory. Prior to that, she led human resources as the regional HR director for Uber across Asia Pacific mega region. Welcome, ma'am. Our next speaker is Mr. Sandeep Aaron De Silva. He is the senior principal, employee relations for Infosys Limited. Sandeep is a seasoned industry professional with total 18 plus years of insightful experience in areas of employee relations, HR strategy planning and implementation and people development. Being an employee relations professional, he is effectively working to provide safe, discrimination-free and positive work culture. Welcome, Sandeep. Now let me introduce you to our next panelist, Ms. Akansha Lat. Akansha has uh, diverse experience in various HR functions like planning management, OD, learning and development, performance management, business partner, partnering and communication. Currently, she is the director of HR for Make My Trip. Welcome, ma'am. Our next panel member is Mr. Raghun Adarwal. He is the Senior General Manager and Lead for Hero Academy. He is leading Hero Academy in his current role. He remained Head HR for R&D East Hero Motor of India and Global and led HR function for HMPL Gurgaon plant. Over the last three decades, he has headed strategic HR and OD in multiple organization sectors in different parts of the world. Welcome, sir. May we have you on the stage, please? And the last panelist is Mr. Salen Lal, he is the CHRO and Vice President for Maruti Suzuki India Limited. He started his career as a management trainee after being campus based at Tata Steel Jamshedpur in 1992. He has been involved directly and has been accountable for the plan of stimulating industrial relations at Maruti's Manipur Car Plant post-2012. He is currently the CHRO of MSIL. He is leading various projects like HR strategy implementation, gender diversity inclusion initiatives, and the HR capability development for MSIL. Welcome, sir. With this, I would like to hand over the session to Mr. Rai. Welcome once again, everyone. Thank you very much. Is this working? Oh, no. Can you hear me at the back? My phone is here. My phone is here. Hello. 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 The test is can the last room hear me? Can't hear me. Okay. If they can't tell me, it's very unlikely we hear the other. This one is working. Working now? Okay, thank you. So, my dear friend, Nathan Sabat, there is no way you can get people to your standard, but I ain't even gonna try. <laughs> so, uh, so, from the sublime to the more mundane, if I may use the word, not really mundane, it's actually exciting. <laughs> uh, so, the topic here is aligning ER strategy in the new world order. So, clearly, I've been asked to address uh, on the panel that is supposed to address three aspects. What is the new world order? Uh, what do you understand by ER strategy and what is the ER strategy of your organization? So that's roughly the three aspects. Uh, I'll start off by uh, sharing uh, some of my uh, views uh, on the new world order and what I think is very interesting for us to talk about. And then I'll request my panelists uh, to talk. Uh, the way we want to structure it is I'll talk for a couple of minutes that we go to each person and 
I pose a question, an easy question, in syllabus question. <laughs> where I try and say something from the unit speech, then I'll come back again to the unit speech, and then we'll open up for QA, and if there aren't enough questions, then we'll go and have a chat with ourselves to find a fireside or any other kind of chat. So, uh, I first want to start off by saying that the new world order, of course, there is technology, it's very important, but there are other technology issues that are taking place in addition to technology. One it is the changing demographics between the world, I mean the world, age, gender, nationality, culture, all these things are changing and they have as much of a profound impact on the supply and demand as technology does. Then there are geopolitical shifts taking place and then finally uh, we don't talk about it as much as I think we should which is environmental climate change. And all this is happening in a highly interconnected world. Whatever happens anywhere is going to impact us across borders and inside borders and inside of So in this kind of a sort of roughly defined new world order, uh, it leads to what I used to call Buka, but now a new word has been given to me, Bali. So thank you very much. So it's Bali, uh, where uh, an additional element is that of pushback by all stakeholders. So you've got to deal with Bali, but in addition there is a pushback, maybe just coming out of Bali. So that pushback factor in an interconnected world is very crucial for us as we talk about uh, industrial relations. So in this new world order, given Bali plus uh, pushback, how do we unleash the full potential of our workforce to achieve the purpose of the organization and the strategy of the organization? Through innovation and productivity, how I would like to frame the problem that we are addressing. Right. Now, clearly, uh, there is work, there is worker, and there is workplace. Clearly, there is the hard side of things, there's machines, but as everybody has been stressing, machines everybody will have, technology everybody will have. It's probably the people who will make all the difference to whether we are competitive or not. So when we talk about people, is IR a critical business process like marketing, like human capital, which is mostly about white order, uh, like R&D, like finance, is IR becoming a critical business process that is on the radar screen of top level? That's a question I'd like to pose to you. Uh, we talk about mostly the organized way. Like labor within our factory, but we all have extended supply chains, upstream, downstream. We all use many forms of uh, contractual, uh, I'm using the word contractual labor. Now there is gig workers, platform workers, and the old time it was temporary contract labor. How do you deal with those? It may be a little easier to deal with those who are on our payroll. But now in an interconnected world, and we learned that and we saw that in the COVID. Life came to a grinding point when people who were outside of our families were stopped up to work or were forced to work. So, how do we handle that? I'd like to pose that as a question. Uh, I think we talked about trust. Many people refer to trust. And how do we create trust? Because so that is crucial if we are going to engage and involve people and tap into their potential so that we can. Take advantage, if I may dare to use that word, of their full potential towards innovation and productivity. So, uh, these are uh, some of the questions that uh, I hope we will cover in some way or the other. And finally, I'd like to leave one question Do we treat labor as a short term cost to be minimized, or do we treat labor? as one of those rare assets that actually appreciate over time and not depreciate if we invest wisely in it. And are the benefits that we will get far greater than the cost? So this is a question of the mindset. And uh, finally, can an organization and can a nation be competitive if it is not also fair and inclusive? Now, I'm very sorry, I'm, I'm maybe saying too many things. I'm not expecting you to pick up on all that. Maybe you could pick up on one or the other aspect. So uh, let me now, 
sort of remaining in <laughs> syllabus. I love that. Uh, and with apologies to the book, my dear, brilliant friend, Rather than Sahib. Let me start uh, just by the way to start. Maybe we can start from the left. Right? So, Akaksha, can you tell us in you know, what I have roughly described as a new word order, which are one or two aspects that have really impacted uh, your IR strategy? And which aspect of your IR and could I humbly and respectfully request you and all the panelists that we take on all the three of them? Otherwise, we won't get back to the interaction. Over to you, Amar. Thank you so much, sir. And before I start off, I think thank you to Marvi Sisipi, to Amish Day Memorial Trust uh, for having all of us here and giving us this opportunity. I would just like to uh, confess this is my first in person panel. And uh, you know, uh, and this is a very august audience I have in front of me. So I'm looking to learn and share a little bit of what I have experienced. Um, with that, I will start off. So I think currently, we just wanted to pick up uh, on the topic itself, and we say the new world order. It's usually in a traditional sense, you know, whenever the world goes to any uh, event of like major, uh, you know, major consequence, you know, be it the world wars, the Gulf War, or anything which gets the international quality together, is when a new world order emerges. And I think the pandemic has been nothing short of that, and that is what you know has brought us to this point. Uh, so, and in this new world order, as a nation, I think we have you know gone through uh, gone through the Towns and, and, and like a pretty tough time in the past two years, but we are now a thriving economy, right? And we are raring to go. The hundred plus unicorns that have been minted in the past few years is just, I think, an example of that. And now we play by our own terms, right? We don't want, we don't be uh, dictated by what's happening around the world. But as a nation, I think we are in the stage of arriving. And the corporate setup is pretty much, to my mind, a reflection of that as well, right? So currently, and uh, you know, and you, how is it reflected, you know, on on social platforms? Because recently we had someone who was who was forced to leave the platform because you know he spoke about working 18 hours a day, right? And then on the other side, you have people on the same platform talking about moonlighting and quiet quitting and so on and so forth. So it's it's chaotic, but I think we are uh, you know we have great opportunity in front of us to really, as organizations, to flex ourselves in all directions and to create that proverbial balance. So I think the new world order for us, or for me, would be flexibility and balance as an organization as a guide to Thank you. Thank you, Akamsha. So let me just sort of take, uh, take you a bit by surprise whether I think you would expect you to do so that I'm trying to incorporate a little bit of excitement that comes up. Let me, uh, from your point of view, which aspect of the new world order uh, is impacting your organization most, and, and which aspect of your IRs? Thank you, thank you, sir. And uh, that is indeed out of syllabus because I was waiting for study of the <laughs> So definitely, <laughs> it my surprise. So thank you, thank you, Sri Diki, sir, and the entire Bharati leadership team. Uh, greetings, uh, Mr. Superna. Uh, I have uh, been an alumni of Maruti uh, as well as uh, for me this is this is uh, really really uh, kind of heartwarming and my heartfelt congratulations for hosting this year on year and all of you for coming here and uh, uh, kind of uh, contributing to this particular cause. Uh, if I talk of my industry in terms of uh, new world order, so I would look at. Uh, the world order is being ruled by the runaway technological boom, which is again a global characterized by global interconnectedness with the advent of 5G and other connectivity tools, which is taking the data speed from 100 Mbps to 10 GB uh, per second, which is mind-boggling 100 times more the speed which we are experiencing. So this is giving rise to uh, kind of uh, IC engine uh, kind of things of the past. Uh, not necessarily in coming 5 years or 7 years, but definitely what is happening is instead of car on the wheels, it is becoming computer on the wheels because of the connectedness. And uh, 
it is also giving rise to the technology like internet of things blockchain the artificial intelligence machine learning these kind of skills which are coming and the whole front for the people to learn at the workplace so that is very important and again the predictive maintenance is one area where it is taking shape now people are alarmed before the problem comes in in your car or in the in the mobility solutions so what happens is uh, you 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 change the way you approach the service stations the supply chain is becoming because of the system integration and the advanced data analytics supply chain and logistic solutions are becoming cheaper your car showroom is being converted into digital uh, marketplace so those things are actually uh, weeding away the jobs which are repetitive in nature and because of that the jobs of the high -end, highly skilled category they are coming into fore and that's where the organization's responsibility is there to enable your people for the high skill so that they don't, they don't lose their job that's very important actually thank you thank you very much and so i now go to you so that it is okay i'm not taking too much by sir please go ahead first of all it is indeed a honor and a privilege that uh, i'm here and speaking in front of all of us i passed out from the same college 30 years back sir sir ranji and uh, on a very personal note till 18th of July 2012 Mr. Abhish Dev was my reporting manager and again to you Sudhana ma'am we miss him every day coming on to the subject I have three different perspectives number one the way we are looking at the current generation we have three different categories of employees to deal with one of course people irrespective of the kind fact that whether they are blue collar or white collar but there are people working on the shop floor and people not working on the shop floor that is perspective one perspective two is the new age millennials or the generation next with whom we are dealing with and obviously they, have, they are susceptible to the environment and this susceptibility comes from the influence maybe it is the peer pressure or anything else but the environment certainly has a role to play so we need to match their aspirations the way things have shaped up post pandemic and the third which you mentioned sir and very rightly so is the non-regular category of people in our parlance we call them the non-regular or reflexive resource so that also needs to be addressed accordingly as far as the care is concerned thank you sir thank you and i thank you um, I think I have been in the industry that I think it's just more in the midst of the industry. I think uh, the first question on what changes. There are some things that are changing and some things that are not changing. What's not changing is the focus of quality. That's the focus of quality and the patient. There's a huge implication of manufacturing. Right? Um, um, the second is in terms of um, what changes. Right? I think the supply chain disruption, right? both externally, well, it has a huge implication on your ER strategy because it goes down to networking, it goes down to uh, location of factories, it goes down to country dependence, it goes down to should you really be manufacturing everything in house. So I think uh, there's a lot that's happening in the ER and the IR world. I'm kind of also picking on your question to say that is that center square in management teams from a strategy standpoint? I think for a company like Philips, I think so. Because supply chain is at the heart of everything we do. We're an innovation first and a startup company. Uh, but I would say that's probably not the case in really some of the other organizations that I have worked with. So it's a mixed bag. I think there needs to be more focus, for sure. Thank you, Vishwala. Last but not least at all, Sandeep. Uh, I think Dependent from uh, IT and IT and services sector point. Uh, for us, looking at it at this moment, uh, challenges about the hybrid workflow. It, hybrid is going to be the future, and no doubt for that. Uh, pre pandemic, we were in a place where we had everybody coming into office, and then we moved completely virtual overnight. We had to shift desktops, laptops to people's homes. We had people who were uh, in our campus deciding for training 
as part of the college of 10,000 people, we had to evacuate them next 48 hours and enter the reach home in this house. I mean, from there and looking forward, uh, moving into a hybrid working environment, of course, we have this, this orders and government guidance which is talking about 50% work from office, etc. Uh, but from my point of view, I would look at it in the three sector. One is mm -hmm. a certain set of employees will want to come to work every day, such as me. Um, that's one question. And then you have another set of employees who will want to work permanently from home. Some people are listing certain set of outputs which talks about permanently working from home. And then you have a large population who will want to work in a hybrid model. So how do we enable these people to come to office? They will want to work two days in that work and two days back at home, or maybe three days back at home, vice versa. So, so that's something that we're looking at and how do you enable that, how do you ensure that we do our information activities in line with managing the whole uh, change management, balancing the employee needs and the organization are. So that's something. Thank you. So we've had our first round. Uh, now we just start our second round. We'll try and keep it a little brief. And we don't have to cover everything, just cover something which really stands out. So this is about the ER strategy of your organization. I can follow the same sort of pattern for the demographic device of life. I apologize. Uh, so we'll start with a conference and then we'll go to another Tell us what in the ER strategy of your organization. Is something that really stands out that I would like to share with this audience. So, I think uh, as an organization strategy and ER strategy, I think uh, the board has been how to strike that balance. Right? So, uh, with the pandemic, travel was obviously the worst hit. And, uh, you know, with business being at its lowest, as a business, we diversified and we said, now let's look at more B2B uh, segments and look at, you know, other geographies and do a whole lot of other things. And uh, look at cost structures at the same time and ensure that the balance is made. On the people strategy, I think uh, we have re looked at a, certain, a few things and I think uh, something from what you mentioned as to how do we look at our people now. You know, earlier we would focus on refencing our uh, high potential, our, our high performance, and working with them more closely. I think post the pandemic, uh, in the new year, your strategy, the focus shifted to critical roles. People who have uh, institutional knowledge, people who have been with the organization, who have invested themselves in the organization, I think now we are investing more in them and the returns have you know, really, really paid off. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, mm -hmm. other thing that I think, uh, right, I think most of us have done is obviously over communicate to all the empty number of channels that we can so that you know we just no news is not good news any longer. So we want to, you know, really communicate and really ensure that we're getting to the employee, getting to the teams first before they hear anything from anywhere else, minus office break point. I think that's something that, you know, we've been doing. One thing that I think we've done in our performance management system are by we want more output driven, more data centric and very, very number driven, we've scaled our data. So now performance appraisals, for example, are only feedback driven. So the conversation is about, you know, how the person's done and vice versa. And I think that is the balance that's been able to create to some extent. Can I just ask you one question? Just in a company like yours, is there any distinction between the white collar and the blue collar? You don't have anything no, more really. to say. all of the oh, same. Right. Nice. All, 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 all. Okay. Thank you very much. I come now to better. So, uh, again, uh, since there are three incidents questions, so I would look uh, at my people's uh, ER strategy uh, from the three angles, basically. So one would be definitely career, second is compensation, and third is culture. So if I look at uh, from the career point of view, uh, considering the kind of disruption which is going to happen and which is going to diminish the low skilled job, I would like to integrate the capability uh, aspect into their careers. So each advancement will be linked to the capability. Whether I can create capability, capability centers in my organization, yes, we should and we must. And then in, after, after creating a succession plan and after creating their career plan, their advancement and promotion should be linked. The reward strategy should be linked. So that is one. So this, the entire strategy of career would be to create the leaders of tomorrow. The shop floor to top floor approach would be the uh, order of the day. 
How do we really enable our shop floor people? And I'm talking about the people who are working on floors. It's not about uh, white collar people. So how do I enable that they reach to a particular level where they can supervise and manage the entire workforce? That kind of enablement I am talking about. There also we can take the government support, the Skill India mission. They have different programs on that. Different skill levels are integrated. So they can be easily implemented in my organization. Second, is, second aspect is compensation. How do I become competitive? Now today's environment, we have talked about demographic. So Gen G in the shop floor who are working, they are also aspirational. They are looking for payment for their contribution. Payment for the skill like acquired. So that is very important. I, how do I strategize my compensation where they are rewarded conventionally plus for the skill knowledge they possess plus the contributions they make. So that is also very important. And the third aspect is culture. Culture again, I mean it is said that uh, uh, people are going to forget what you have done and said to them. But uh, they are not going to forget how you made them feel. So basically how to create that environment of capability building and for that three pillars are again very important. The alignment with the purpose of the organization, the larger purpose, then alignment will create the commitment, the commitment culture and the third will be capability culture that is can do. So can do, will do and must do will be the three base pillars of my culture that will enable my team performance, individual contribution and that will impact the overall culture. So how do uh, I would like to create and go on for that? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, Nathan sir, I was listening to you and I heard you about three, four years back also. And in one of the workshops you had mentioned that for every HR person what is very important is to understand three things. You understand the number of your organization so you should be on top of it. The second thing which you mentioned that you understand the process and the third was context and I agree with Pranansha that it is important that we communicate irrespective of the categorization of the employees, we communicate these three things very clearly to everyone. That is part one. Part two, when I talk about the shop floor, when I talk about the manufacturing working group, Apart from the fact that we communicate and we communicate at regular intervals at different platforms, what is more important is to get them engaged all the time. Engagement doesn't come from the activities which you do because it is more in terms of what suits them, what is right for them in terms of our process, our kind of environment and that needs to be characterized in order to handle the <coughs> work and there on the shop. The second category as we are now progressing and there are in your practices and every organization is actually trying to migrate. So we are also trying to migrate so from a very typical level based organization to role based organization and that is the need of the R. But of course that has to be done with a specific uh, speciality being focused into and then accordingly we handle the function. And the third is that we have our own practices, guidelines. And that also has to be picked or maybe improved over a period of time. Things are changing as I mentioned earlier also that the new age workforce and especially after their experience during the COVID times or post pandemic, they have used to work in a different kind of environment which is more conducive, more comfort, comfortable and still they are productive. So that also needs to be addressed as I look into it. Thank you. Thank you very much sir. So I come now to I think uh, Sajid, as a speaker, I mean, I just want to add uh, most of this is quite common, right? Um, if you look at the teenage workforce, right, so on the shop floor as well as you look at the model, two elements. One is from an employer, it's a little bit about how are you investing in those skills because they're meeting a lot of pressures, right? It does mean that you have to follow in the appropriate way to get a quality metric to do that. Some, I think the workforce is kind of very important because you have different groups or sub groups. So, you know, like on the same shop, probably they're working on different lines. Because many a time it comes down to, I think, now correct somewhere here is this group of people who just come on board and they're doing 
Thank you, Vishwana. Thank you. Uh, just to add uh, two more things. One is um, we do a lot of investigations, like uh, people be in the valley valley states or information security violation or random states or in the forest actually. Um, while earlier it was much easier because we were sitting face to face and then having mm -hmm. organization you could understand the body language of the person you could understand what was going to. Mm -hmm. Now moving into this virtual mode, uh, it's very difficult to understand when the person is hiding behind the camera because it's not the person to come on camera. But still, we have heard cases where people are going to harm themselves as opposed to investigation to the area that's not the problem. And we don't want the company to be in the media for wrong reasons, right? We need to ensure that we build capability of our team members and input them on how do you manage things more sensitively and also deal with organizations that follow the person that you have a long time. Second area, if you look at it the um, last few months, we have a lot of people who have joined this team. We have heard about the great resignation, etc. So there's a lot of production that's happened. So get 50% of our population are new who have joined in the last two years. We have not probably met their managers face to face, not met their team. And then the whole social connect is lost. So how do you build this platform and enable people to come into work and then should have more social connect, informal connect with their team, which will enable them to increase the learning curve, um, collaborate better with the team, uh, and then of course uh, move into a high performance work culture, which is always been there for. That's two points I want to Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, between the five uh, panelists and the vast range that they've covered, we have, uh, we have I hope, uh, they conveyed some, some information. But I also hope that we have provoked some questions. So uh, we would now like to open up for some questions and be guided by what you are doing. So could we start? Maybe, I know there are sort of very big heavyweights that are sitting up in front. But before I come to you, uh, could we go to the back of the hall? Uh, would, would any of the students have any questions for us? Uh, let me just let me go there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Does, is this working? I think it's working. Okay. So, uh, do the students, so let me ask uh, any questions from. Uh, our young friends uh, at the back of the hall, any questions at all? Yeah. Okay, uh, so there are no questions, so let's come to the front of the hall. Are there any? And there is, yeah, yes, there is one question, uh, thank God. Otherwise, we would have to <laughs> start planting some questions. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, sir. oh there is somebody at the back. Oh, wow, okay, great, yes. My Good, afternoon. Nahi hai. Good afternoon. Sir, as, as you are working with labor, industrial labors are structured and organized, but on the other hand, India is one of the largest unstructured labor markets. So, how can we solve that problem? Okay, so that's a very uh, big and powerful uh, question. Would anyone in, in the panelists like to take that? So, the question, as I have understood it, is that, uh, you know, a large part of India's working population, the workforce, is unorganized, right? And how do you deal with that unorganized workforce? Was that the question? Yeah, okay, all right. One is uh, definitely through uh, government machinery. Uh, so, what we have done is uh, the new wage code which has come on labor. So, which is going to be implemented. I mean, this is uh, work in progress, kind of, and uh, because of various uh, issues in the state and the center, uh, it is it is on the way. Actually. So it has covered a large part of uh, unorganized sector in terms of their social security and other aspects. So it is going to benefit uh, the the unorganized sector also. These as far as their wages, is, the concept of floor wages have also come. Then uh, the working hours, uh, the social security measures, all are covered in that. So that is one structural change which is going to happen and it is going to bring a huge change in the society. 
Second aspect, uh, many companies with, uh, what they are doing is uh, they are definitely supporting through their CSR fund. Uh, so large part of you know working population, how to enable them and to come and join the industry or otherwise. So skill building is another part which is lot of companies are, are taking care, including Hero Motor Power. Uh, us uh, also we are taking, we are running many programs for the women and the children of the villages and that is quite quite structured. So these are the two ways which can be, you know, uh, impact the people in the society, those who are in the organized sector. Hope I answered your question. Uh, thank you, Ratna. Just to add to what uh, Mr. Ratna just said, the government have also is trying to address the question in form of the new labor code. The new labor code, apart from the fact that whatever has been given in the new wage code, it is also asking you to direct all your channels to work for the non regular category of employees, which means the manpower mix ultimately will have different categories, so including the fixed term employment which has been provided for. It is something to address the unorganized sector itself, so that there is a system which is available to manage that kind of workforce. The education portal is also being created. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So I, uh, I just want to say, uh, yeah, I just completed. Can I just add? So I just want to say, somebody, I think it was mentioned that I'm connected with the International Labour Organization. And a big, a very, very big issue for the ILO is what they call the informal workforce, which in India is somewhere around 90% of the total workforce. And how do we ensure? Uh, decent work and social justice to use ILO terminology for them and the huge focus there is on skill, on providing information and social security. So these are the three things that the ILO is focusing on and uh, uh, the question which we always are struggling with is will the western world use labor standards as a non-tariff barrier to make the sort of developing world less competitive. So there's a balance, I think somebody used the word balance, there's a lot of balancing that is required. But thank you very much for raising this uh, question. It's a very vital and crucial uh, question for not only companies but for the nation as a whole. Because if we have a large part of the workforce which is not going to be happy, which is not going to be skilled, which is not going to be productive, which is not going to be innovative. India loses and there could be a huge social disruption. So it's a really important question. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Next question. There is another question at the back. Oh, Acha, please. Then, uh, let me just take this and I'll come there, if you don't mind, right? Because I think uh, she stood up. I'll come to you. My apologies. I will come to you. Definitely. Thank you so much. I'll come there. And if so, how can we actually do about it? Okay, the question, since the people at the back may not have heard the first yeah. part of it, can you just repeat the question please, so that yeah. then we can get to the answer. So, basically I have two questions. Uh, the first question is, so the, both the questions are related to hybrid work culture. And my first question is that, can we think of bringing hybrid work culture in manufacturing setup? And if so, how can we go about it? That is my first question. My second question is, how can we strike a right balance between making people happy and yet uh, having good profits? Very good. So these are the two questions. Okay, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. So we'll take them one by one. So I guess uh, the two people who are from the manufacturing, or three, three actually from the manufacturing, why don't you take a stand at it? So maybe I can just start. I mean, uh, firstly, the question you asked is on top of mind of a lot of companies, a lot of workers as well, right? But the honest answer is at least for us, we haven't figured it out, okay? And I think that we're at a stage where it's difficult to foresee because if you, if you look at the manufacturing setup, right, it still means operating something. There still is an element of touch and feel, right? So, at least the approach that we have taken as a company, it, it's not related to you as an individual or me as an individual. If you're in certain types of roles, 
So if the definition is based on the type of rows, then you have clearly defined the parameters. So all we tell people is as long as you're doing this process of this role, you know, hybrid is probably something that will not work. But if you're aspiring for a hybrid role, then the focus should be to move from this particular process related to the focus on career movements to a role where hybrid is possible. So then the conversation is not about being unfair, but the conversation is about being transparent on principles and then everyone has to make choices. Having said that, at least we haven't yet sought for pure hybrid on the shop floor because of this. We look at these roles where uh, 100% See, except for manufacturing vehicles, everything else is possible on a hybrid mode. And uh, why I'm saying this that after the pandemic, especially after the first phase, the, the lockdown was a little longer, and we were asked to operate again. So we took some time in order to actually see that our manufacturing facility is conducive to social distancing the various protocols which needs to be followed and as I mentioned we had to actually make changes even on the shop floor or on the conveyor line in order to accommodate the protocol and that was done precisely to see that all other restrictions are followed and we still manufacture the vehicles the way we were doing earlier depending upon the role depending upon the nature of work hybrid model is something which is certainly applicable we are doing right now also and most of the functions then we follow the hybrid model. At the same time, whatever support is to be given, that is being provided. Thank you, Ratan. Building on to uh, both the panelists, uh, one thing is we should concentrate in manufacturing industry is uh, we should concentrate on the roles which can which can be included in the hybrid working, irrespective of the people who are doing at the grades which which are involved in it. So when we are talking about particular roles. On the manufacturing shop floor, uh, it will be difficult, definitely, as Salil said. But there are many, many areas where uh, 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 blue collar, uh, the, the workers, contract laborers, even the temporary workers are involved. For example, in R&D, the cash modeler, the R&D technicians, there are many areas. So if we allow them to use the hybrid model, then we send a message. That it is not the it is not the grade of people which is important. It is the role which is going to take uh, take this uh, particular thing into account whether to go for hybrid working or not. So once that is communicated, and second aspect which uh, 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 Vishpala said was like uh, uh, the the uh, the roles which are important and uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the uh, Yeah. So working principles are very important. Now once you once you communicate to that uh, to the people, people understand that there is a principle of equity which is which is already there and people understand that. So communication is very important in this aspect. Thank you. Right. One point. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Even in IT sector, it's not that hundred percent uh, workforce to be working from will be in hybrid mode. There are certain departments which have to come down with, for example, the state is there always another one of the finance state because HR is looking forward to having the I mean, being back in August because HR is uh, actually in fact uh, there are certain projects where based on client requirement, people will have to come into office and work in the state environment slow. So though some of these things are not hundred percent like it, there are certain departments that based on client needs will have to ensure that it has to manage what you want. Thank you, thank you, Sandeep. I hope we have answered your question to some extent, right? So we'll go back. Yes, young lady. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ananya and I'm from GS Bajar Institute of Management. Sir, so my question is what are the challenges which will be faced by the industrial relationship managers in the new future and how to handle ER issues? Okay, uh, who would like to answer that? I think we spoke about moonlighting. I think that's what the IT sector is actually seeing. So in simple terms, what is moonlighting? I think this was something that was coined somewhere in Europe long back. The people used to work in parallel week in the night time during moonlight hours. So that's how moonlighting came into In simple terms, it means dual requirements. 
Uh, we have seen people, at least we have seen case, a case where a person is working in seven different organizations at the same time. How does it work? It doesn't work for us. Basically, they just keep getting on projects, try and be on pain, uh, avoid coming into office, or getting help in support mission, etc. At least from an IT sector point of view, I don't think we have the appetite to accept moonlighting. Um, there are certain organizations who have already announced that they have terminated the number of people for that, so now we've been looking into it. Uh, and then that will lead into different kinds of issues like politics, etc. That is one. Second area that we are facing challenges on impersonation where because of uh, the virtual interviews etc. happening and the great designation because of which companies are hiring much more number of people because of lot more people. We have seen people taking interviews, somebody else taking an interview on behalf of another person. So we have looked at, analyzed and seen which are the pockets which are potential in terms of getting this kind of fake people in office. And then we look at having moving into a face-to-face interview at least in these locations to start off with. So these are the two things that we have seen at least the challenges, the new ones that have come up now because of the change in the work going on. Would anyone else uh, or in the panel like to respond? Yes, please go ahead. I think the question about the manager, right? And what should they be looking at the salary, etc. I think the post is the main Thank you. 
you know, to uh, get in the new members who, you know, join the organization and just to reward, get to know each other better. Hopefully, translating back to working better together. So that's one thing. Another thing that which keeps people engaged and happy at work is when they keep learning and, uh, you know, uh, don't get into the monotony of work. So, you know, job rotations, like for example, I've been in appointment for seven years and this is my probably fifth or sixth program I do here. So I think these small initiatives really ensure that people remain happy and business will follow, for sure. I think uh, Ratan wants to say that on, on happiness, yeah. right? Building on to that, uh, on happiness. Happiness, again, we'll have to understand in the organization what happiness means to our people. In the organization, there are four generations which are working together. Depending on the age of the organization, you have the kind of age of people which we are working. In manufacturing setup, maximum people from the generation X, then Gen Y, and then now Gen Z has come into the uh, workforce. Now, this equation is going to change very fast uh, uh, in coming 10 years and this particular decade. Now, we have to understand the need of the people. Each generation has different need, and how do we really uh, create our HR and IR initiatives around those themes which each generation is looking at? So that is very important. Gen G, for example, I was reading a study, uh, the recent study, and there it was like Gen G is always they do not like micromanagement at all. They are looking for not only coaching but laser coaching. Span of attention is very low, and they want to like to be engaged. Regular feedback to be given to them, they are not afraid of feedback, but they want to have, a, have, have their bosses working like a buddy. Now, this is the need of the Gen, Gen Y, not Gen Y, but the Gen G. Now, again, we have to understand what happiness means to Gen Y and the, and the Gen X, and then accordingly design our policies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there are just uh, four minutes left. Uh, so, we can take one sharp, quick question and uh, maybe one sharp, I'm sorry, we just, you know, maybe we can engage outside, we can catch hold or whichever panel member you want to ask a question. I'm really sorry, uh, but uh, we, 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 on this side, all right, I'm overruled. Yes, sir. Please. So, who, who is your question addressed to? Because whoever it is has to answer in two minutes. So, no, then let's choose one. Choose one person, please. Not anyone. One person, please. Salut. Salut. Post COVID, there have been a couple of changes in the policy guidelines, and uh, we have just recently announced some for the non uh, people uh, apart from the shop floor manufacturing that uh, they would have some uh, flexibility in terms of work timings, they will have some flexibility in terms of work from home, and we are uh, trying to implement this on a experiment basis with some verticals. And in case it works fine, we will uh, certainly extend to the other verticals also. At the same time, there are certain new trends setting in. People need flexibility in terms of how to dress on a Friday, and then what kind of uh, arrangements can be made in terms of their likes and dislikes. So that also is something which we have just recently announced, and we are working on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think it's very important to give people choices. So right now the trade-off that you would never expect a young 20-year-old person, they actually want to buy maybe a 20 lakh insurance. Like, you know, so people, so this concept of flexibility in benefits, I think is one, obviously the hybrid, right? Like we, we look at lots of policies. Earlier we would only give telephone, mobile, now broadband, right? So it's a simple thing, form of this sort of setup. So I would say, I mean, short for me to tell you, but I think like that, the core, core, I think watch out for every HR person is lots to do 
comes with a cost and a trade-off. So it's not plus plus. You have to take away some and you have to modify. Okay, thank you. So you know, I'm so I'm really sorry those people who had questions. Uh, and so, uh, so this is actually the success of this panel that we have generated questions which we didn't have time to answer. So my uh, a, I apologize humbly and respectfully to those who want to ask questions and we have not been able to address them. B, I would like to suggest that if you are really interested, catch hold of whoever panelist you wanted to ask your question in the lunch break and ask them. So let me just end since we have a few seconds left. I think what we are seeing is that many uh, beliefs and sort of uh, sacred cows uh, that we accepted have been challenged and are being challenged. And I think it's very important for us not to blindly follow what we have heard. Uh, one of the most influential books I have read in, uh, in my life is a book called Hard Facts, Dangerous Half-Truths and Total Nonsense. This is a book uh, written by Pepper and Sutton of the uh, Stanford Graduate School of Business and it's worth a read. Uh, so is up. You know, we blindly keep following what we are told. Jack Welch said the post curve is God's gift to mankind. We all went that way. Many of us felt very uncomfortable with it. It was destroying teamwork, for example. But Mahasya Agya, Harvard Business School wrote about it, so we blindly followed it. It took Google or Amazon or one of those people to start challenging it, and now nobody wants to go that way. So I think it's very important for us to challenge uh, beliefs that may not necessarily apply. And COVID and the new world has done that, and we have seen plenty of examples. So that's the basic message I'd like to leave uh, for the audience. And uh, I don't know whether you agree with me or not, but it's really important to know that many things that we are told are the right thing to do, maybe absolutely the wrong thing to do in our context, and we should come to our own judgment. So thank you very much. Outstanding panel. What a privilege for me. What a great learning uh, for me from what you said. Thank you very much. Good luck. God bless. from their organization from the industry at large. I would now request Mr. Siddiqui to please come up on stage and felicitate Mr. Rajiv. Thank you. Before I felicitate the honor, Rajiv, let me share a few backstage development. Two days back, I got an emergency message that Rajiv brought from Mahindra Agency will not be able to meet. Present here on 28th, he will be traveling. So we got into a little studying emergency, and then I requested Varsha Bob that we do him and then Varsha again. And day before yesterday, Rani Bai informed me that that emergency has been handled, travel is postponed, so I am coming just listening to the whole uh, part. And yesterday evening, Varsha gave me a chopper that he has got some emergency. So he will not be able to join today. I am the backup. Of Rashi uh, Suresha on the false history. So again, I went back to Rashi. So I told him, Bhavi Ka Chakra, Aapko Abhi Se Memoji Ko Nane Ke Liye Majboot Kar Raha. So here is Mr. Rashi Suresha, finally. I would now request uh, Mr. Aris 
calcín o que es de cobre. Hay una. I would request Mr. Yuvaraj Shivanthap to join us on stage and felicitate Mr. Rabin Adhwan. Thank you. Thank you. I would now request Mr. Varindar Varma on stage. He is the head of HR and Transformation at Maruti Sudhu. Uh, so can we have you on stage and please felicitate Mr. Kansha. Challenge number one. 
He is moderator, is not fluent in English, he uses Hindi. So challenge number one. Challenge number two, it is just before lunch. Challenge number three, the panelists have to give answers, promises which they have to fulfill. Uh, it is not corporate plan that we signed once. I was in a company who prepared a corporate plan for 15 years. And every boss signed it without reading. I said, oh, how come it's so easy? He said, we will not be there when the plan is implemented. <laughs> Whereas these people, these people, whatever they say, they will implement. That's the challenge for you. Challenge for the audience is, you have questions for them, but somewhere, something called ego comes down the way. So how can I ask a question to students? So that's the challenge for you. We will overcome all the challenges just before lunch. We will make it interesting. Okay, that is challenge number one. Challenge number two, if I say something in Hindi, the neighbors will translate for me. People do not understand Hindi. So that is challenge number two. Challenge number three, so they will be very cautiously, consciously, constructively, creatively make promises that they will fulfill. Okay? That's the channel number three. Channel number four, audience will take the courage, stand up and ask questions, seek clarification from the students who will run industry relations in the future. So all four we are solving. Now channel number one, we said will make it interesting. What do you mean by interesting? See, any any panel discussion is actually like a pravachan. So we can only do that the pravachan or the vachan will be of good nature. Very competent person, I will ensure. The second one is the pravachak. The panelists are very good. I can do that. But the third component is very important. We need shrotas for a pravachak to succeed. But unfortunately, even if Nathan gave those statistics that all the 10 percent people are here, but I have a doubt that in a pravachan samaro, besides shrota, there are four other categories. The second category is a category called Sota. <laughs> and if the neighbor tells him, boss, you are sleeping, he will react. No, I just dance a Sota. <laughs> he is not only passive, inactive, he is reactive. The third category is a category called Sarota. Sarota is an instrument used in many parts of our country to cut bitterness. Supari Kartne ka enter ko Sarota hote. Basically, what's up?
and uh, so coming now to the subject, what is the challenge? Uh, what is the major what changes? What are the changes which is happening? So first change which I will talk, like to talk about is the revolution which is happening in the information technology, and with that there has been very much uh, technological advancements. So which it has changed the uh, business processes and it has led to the hyper automation in the workplace. And it has replaced the age-old work, the paperwork which we used to do. So I think technology is one thing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one thing. Yes. So according to me, one of the major changes is that uh, there is a lot of focus on diversity and inclusion. And also uh, these days we are focusing a lot on the uh, belongingness of the employee. Is it a focus or can the changes happen? Sir, uh, I believe that uh, right now we are focusing, but effort, effort should be directed towards promoting the locking oh, That's one thing. Yeah. One thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi. So I would like to speak about motivation. So I feel that um, the things that people get motivated by are changing. Then the motivation things get motivated by extrinsic factors. Then, but nowadays focus more on learning. Uh, Feeling a sense of belongingness, okay. feeling like they are contributing to a goal. So there is some motivation and change. Right. Yeah. Hi everyone. So, sir, I believe that the very basic reason for all this here, uh, all this discussion is that the priorities of the employees have changed. And to uh, uh, to clarify, by employees, I don't mean only the technical or the functional workforce which is there. But every member which is present within an organization, all the way from a janitor to a white collar executive. So uh, we have seen that people now want recognition, acknowledgement. So uh, only the monetary benefits are not the things that people focus on. So not the monetary benefits, the recognition. It is recognition, acknowledgement. Great, great insight. Uh, we were doing a research in a particular bank. What motivates uh, blue collar workers? We got three answers. The blue collar, very basic, is a clean cheese. So, clean cheese is a clean cheese. Hali means let's have food together, let's have tea together, let's have walk together. So, that is one. The second one is theory. Theory means paisa, incentive, overtime. That's one second. I said only one? No, no, no. All three combinations. What is third one? They said tali. If I do a good job, somebody should clap for me. If our, our panelist has come out with something good, he should clap for us. Workplace. You know how many workplaces are there? 21. We thought the home office, 
employee 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 one 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 to the other the clients the managers oh clients yeah outside yes oh clients you can say human they are also human beings they are they recognize that yeah. i think and over your figures they portion with their child yeah is it different categories of workers are there so every category is done the relationship uh sir so i would say for me the middle level managers and the upper level managers also have a very important it is, is it is not management both the management union middle management upper management no point is junior management middle management junior i mean that's that's how say relationship yeah so i'm going to go one level higher and say the relationship between the cc and the upper management because that sort of defines the culture so i believe it's a top down so he is seen from a macro level ultimately that will is possible i think i take the wider aspect and talk about the society in which we are catering to every organization catering to society yeah. absolutely absolutely i mean when you talk about human relations relationship with fellow human beings with whom we might have an employment relationship commercial relationship An emotional relationship, a social relationship, an economic relationship, or a spiritual relationship. But as long as they are human beings, human mm-hmm. relationship. <laughs> Then we will limit our discussions to human relations at the workplace. Okay. So when you say human relations at the workplace, with so many stakeholders, so I, you know, I thought I will discuss with you. First, the important is culture. The culture is not done. The strategies will fail. Practices will fail, promises will not be. All that will happen. So first thing, probably let us discuss about building a good culture that enables nurturing, enabling, bonding, so for all these relationships. This is one I want to discuss with you. Second, I want to discuss with you on that on the culture. Any, any, which one? Which one? What else you want to discuss? What is the culture we discuss? In the end, what is it? All the things are good to end. So they want to discuss about now. We have understood the changes. We understood the relations, the need. What is the ask? Now they say how to set up a good culture that enables, that promotes, that nurtures good human relations. Okay, that's it. Anyone can start. I mean, you decide it. You would answer. Fairness, very important. Fairness, very important. 
uh, I mean, uh, everyone should get their due recognition of hard work and uh, it should not be a literary culture. She said, good culture is fairness. So that will help the uh, human being. So I feel like best culture is one where an employee feels safe to express themselves. Uh, so it's not just of the so, I think safe. It is not safe for many means. It's not when we talk about safety, we are not talk about mission safety or the security safety, emotional safety. In this company, can I express my views? In this company, can I take this? In this company, can I experiment? In this company, can I talk about the application? That safety doesn't feel safe. Emotional safety. I think one of the most important for is motivation and self motivation, self empowerment, and the growth factor. So, good culture promotes self motivation. She says, characteristic is okay. If the composition of the self motivation is high, totally 100, we are all motivated. Some because of the carrot, some because of the fear, some because of the self intrinsic. She said if that component is higher, if the culture promotes self motivation. And she also used the word empowerment. She used the word empowerment. So I would like the kind of empowerment. Empowerment is not just as a human being, but as an employer. No, no, empowerment is a definition. Right, right. No, I'll make it simple. Because people from our uh, Ranchi will understand that. There is a title called Das in Odisha, Bengal, and Bihar. He has three modes in direction, autonomy, support. If you provide these three, the fellow gets, gets a feeling of empowerment. Just giving one direction, it's not empowerment. Just giving freedom, it's not empowerment. Just giving the feeling of support. It's a combination of the three. And it's a multiplication formula. D multiplied by A multiplied by S. Any one is zero, one two is zero. That is important. So we are done this. Oh, we we'll move on. We we'll move to the practices. Now, who must have done research? You must have studied. Many people must have come and given you guest lectures. You must have googled any good practices that you have noted, or you think it is possible to do. Good practices, they promote human relations and nurture human relations, strengthen human relations at all. Any good practices you have come across, maybe from your own institutes also you can think. You have any organization also you can think. Good practices. You have anyone thinks that. So, uh, promoting good culture at workplace, this is not only one person's job or just the HR's job. So, it should be at every level. And that's why the inclusion of leadership is also very important. Open communication must be there with the leaders as well as the managers. You are saying it's not HR? Not only HR, HR, but it is the uh, job of every single person at the workplace yeah. to instill the culture. Wonderful. So one good practice is every manager has to be a human relations manager. Wonderful. Uh, Thank so you. Adding to this, uh, we can use the technical word which is upward communication. Well, an employee has the ability uh, to directly com uh, communicate with the upper level manager and not follow the process, the traditional processes that are there. So, in a company, if people can make upward communication with ease, uh, that's a good practice. If people are encouraging, so you do a town hall, 15 minutes, talk, 45 minutes, you have a conversation. So, that's a good practice. If somebody is raising his hand, when I look at him, he's doing like this. <laughs> I know his name also. I don't want to expose it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, speaking of communication, so the two organizations have been involved. Yep, you are talking about the So, which is, uh, there should be an excess communication, especially, you know, uh, talk down from upper management to uh, the uh, basic zone of the Because uh, I have, like, both of them work, there's always a disconnect between what upper management expected and what we thought was expected. Uh, so, you know, they say the only thing, the only thing that can go wrong in communication is absolutely no communication. Very good. It's not communication from bottom to off doesn't mean you have to communicate what the boss wants, what, what the boss likes. No, what you feel is right. If you are able to do that, that's what we call it assertive communication. 
you want to say what you want to say without uh, disrespecting the other person. So that's what they say. It is what uh, monkey bath and we make it a color if it Monkey bath won't happen. That's right. So another one would be um, making sure that when you give a role or when you give a class, having some guidelines around with it so that it takes the errors much, <coughs> it increases the errors a lot by having guidelines. So good culture is, you know, good culture, we give job descriptions, we give enabler, we give a manual, we give a facilitator, we give an enabler, that's what he says. If you tell him how to do it, that direction, that's the deep part actually, the deep part. Clear direction, giving you the GPS. That's a good practice. So many companies, when they join during the induction, the management makes a presentation to the new This is your role, these are our expectations, these are our resources, these are our review of performance, these are the rewards of performance, all that is presented to the person. Any other good practice? 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 Respect for each other and also failures. Hindustan Petroleum Corporation. Somebody said, Oh, Padal, you know they introduced a trophy for the biggest failure in the organization. There are 52 entries. The trophy name is SPCL Operating. People have to come and share their failure stories and what are the learnings. So that in future somebody attempts to do the same thing, he will not do the same thing. Similarly, when you try out something, you will make a lot of learnings for people. So they do that. That's the culture. I'll give you an example of SPCL. The problem name is SPCL operation. So one more thing is that there should be sensitization <laughs> in the entire work culture so that because we are having diverse group. So, so, the the yeah. so what they are saying is, when you go to campus recruitment, tell them about our culture in a transparent manner. Tell them, tell them, in our company, hierarchy works. In our, in our company, uh, uh, only this is how communication is done. In our company, we value these contributions. Huh? If you are a Panya who is strong, in our company we will get a faster promotion. Tell them, no upfront. That's what they say. Sensitize them with our culture. That's a, that's a good culture. That's a good culture. Any other culture? Also, uh, the opportunities that are there uh, in the organization that should be open to all. Uh, and uh, okay. so research shows that many people don't even know okay. that the opportunities that are yeah. coming up. So, if there are opportunities for growth, opportunities for a job, opportunities for a job rotation, a job enrichment, anything, it should be known to people to translate. That's a good practice. That's a good practice. Any other? So, okay, I'm coming back to the audience. Any good practice that you have come across which promotes human relations, good human relations? Uh, one practice, anybody? Uh, any one practice? The man who is not. Are you in modern India? They have implemented a gift allowance to every employee. And he has physically given a gift to another employee who has cooperated and made it successful. Wonderful. Okay. So, in that, it's a wonderful. It's a gifting culture. So, gifting. I say thank you. You find out somebody and say thank you. You say well done. You find out somebody and say well done. Yeah, one practice. Many companies are uh, having daycare facilities, especially for <coughs> employees. I think this will make uh, their women employees okay. more experienced. Daycare facility helps women employees, but the problem is they want night care, moonlighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. So one could be connecting them to a purpose, that why they all are doing this. We did a question or anything? <laughs> <laughs> connecting all of them to a common purpose. Right? A common purpose. Okay. Yes. Connect people to a common purpose is a good practice. Yes. Easier said and done down. Any other good practice anyone wants to share? Yeah. So encouraging the culture of feedback. Well, culture of feedback, but it's called Hindi. Pata, no? Very good. The culture of giving and receiving feedback and 
and uh, it's not giving positive feedback, giving constructive feedback, <coughs> ability to communicate to the other party something which is not up to your expectation. So that culture, for some people, I'll, I'll quote one company without naming them, they use a formula called PSP, small p, capital S, small p. They start the feedback session with a small positive, and they pick a big S, specific feedback, and the conversation with a small p. This practice is not bad. That is a small p. Yes, small p. Yeah. Any other? We want the last, last spell. Any other practice on that? Yeah, please come back. You see how it works? How it works? Hello? Yes, it works. Sir, like if we are talking in, uh, in the lines of recognition and acknowledgement, I would like to cite what our institution does. So, on the pages of social media or perhaps in other things also, the organizations can do the same that we acknowledge somebody has done something or somebody is from a different background or different culture. So that acknowledgement and to pass that acknowledgement to every stakeholder in the institution is also important. Acknowledging good work done, they do it in their college. See, we all learn, no? Our values uh, are from different sources, no? From our childhood, our family, the schooling, the organization work, the friends with different things, and the society at large, no? So, from the college, they are learning a good practice. When they go to the office company, they will immediately implement this practice. Now, that is nice and good work done. And we fail. Wonderful. We go to the last thing. Okay. The last thing I talk to them is to talk about competencies. The competencies will be in a rapid mode. Huh? So, because there is, what competencies will make a good HR and IR manager succeed? in creating, sustaining, liberating good human relations at the workplace. So what kind of competence is required? So this question is very, very important for the academic, as well for the corporate, as well for the individual. Very important, no? Which competence is required us? Okay, so uh, I, I will go for a rapid round. Shalini. Empathy. Empathy, yeah. Flexibility. Reality. Uh, anybody, anybody has picked up these three words? So, empathy, compassion, all three done, okay. Now the, now the quiz is on. At the end of this uh, rapid round, we will ask uh, the audience, anybody who has picked up all the traits, we will give a gift to them. Okay. Immediate, no? immediate implementation, no? immediate implementation, okay. So, three have gone. Yeah, yeah, such a the mobility of employee. No, no. Agility, yes, you go to south. No, 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 why? So, there's only the two minds. Oh, there's a problem. So, there's stand up. Stand up, stand up. Okay. Stand up and keep the mic there. There's a right problem. They don't do that. Right. Okay. Right. right. Next one. Resilience. Next one. Consistency. Consistency. Strategic approach. Strategic approach. Yeah, I hope you're all participating with me, no? Okay. Right. Next one. Rapid. Competencies, a good HR or IR manager should have so that human relations will be conducive, when everything, all that will happen. Empathy. Empathy, I somebody said already. Yeah. Empathy, somebody said. Conflict resolution. Conflict oh, The ability to resolve conflict. You know, we recently have seen a conflict resolution poster. They, are, they, they were engaging a trainer to, on conflict resolution. Union and management, they will cut together and they will discuss a conflict resolution. They could not decide on the venue. <laughs> so the program did go. Uh, uh, that is the problem. The there is a conflict on the venue itself. So the program didn't happen. Thought leaders. 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 Thought Consistency. Consistency is a good word. Great communicator. Good communicator. See, end of the day, it's communication. Ability to communication. Communication is nothing but, are you a I? That means, you are like me. That's what communication is about. Are you a I? But actually, it's not so. It is receipt, understanding, acceptance, implementation. What you are saying something, are you receiving it, understanding it, accepting it, implementing it. You say something, I am receiving it, understanding it, accepting it, implementing it. That is all you yeah, to become me. Okay.
Okay, next one. The ability to take decision. Ability to take decision, decision making. They think IR managers have to be more decisive. Okay. Analytical. This is more, more analytical. More tech savvy. More tech savvy. Optimism. 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 They should be optimistic that IR will. IR will remain, IR will go. Sir, optimistic and tense. Positivity. What they meant here? Positivity. Positivity. Mistaken. Mistaken. Affirmative. Affirmative. Okay. Affirmative. Let's see who can pick up all the traits. Yeah, one word. Yeah. More than 15? More than 13? Anybody more than 13? Yes. How many? How many found? It's a number, number. It's a quiz, quiz fast. How many? Anybody got more than 12? 20. 20. About 20, come, come, come forward. Come forward. Come here. Fast, fast. Whosoever said 20, come forward. Don't go my business. But then, you know, I'm going to keep the announcement. Tell me. Mira, keep the announcement. अरे भाई उनको बाइक दे दो बेटा फास्ट फास्ट ही सेड एजिलिटी इज वन ऑफ द क्राइटेरिया यू शुड बी वेरी एजाइल कम हियर व्हाट्स योर नेम माय नेम इज कविता आई एम फ्रॉम आर्मी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मैनेजमेंट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी देखो कैसा रास्ता में वो पूरा काम भी खत्म कर रहे हैं इधर आके बोलना है इधर आके बोलो ओके सो शी सेड 20 क्या कमा हेलो एवरीवन सो फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज अफर्मेटिव्स देन एजिलिटी then mobility, empathy, resilience, consistence, they should, uh, should be credited, conflict resolution, thought leadership, cooperation, adaptability, flexibility, good communicator, ability to take decision, analytical, tech savvy, optimistic, and risk taking. Thank you. Thank you so much. That means my panelists made sense to you. What they said has some relevance to you. What they said is practical things. Huh? So that's why you could note and you could relate and you want to go and implement in your college. You want to create those competences in you. And if you are in a, you are in a corporate, you will look for these competencies. If you have about 60% ready, 70% ready, it makes them more ready in each of the competencies. So that was the idea. Now we take your seat. Now they stood up. Uh, somebody told at 2:15 the session will break, and there will be lunch announcement. The group photo might not happen. So that's why they are standing. Yeah, somebody should come on. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Emiliani is positive angle. What is the very fast head of the One word. Consensus. Consensus. Oh, number one. Consensus. Consensus. Uh, one very good. Empathy. Empathy. Now you are empathy. Having people skills, people's manager. One word. A good communicator. That's my dash. Communicator. Communicator. People sensitive. Each my dash. Communicator. All covered. All covered. Thank you, madam. Good question. Anyone else? Actually, there was not a question. Actually, it is only reading. Come. I just wanted to ask. Not ragging, reading. I just wanted to ask that. Why did you choose HR? Why did you choose HR as a curriculum? No, अभी job पे नहीं गया। अब MBA जो कर रहे पूछ सकते हैं। Job तो मालूम ही नहीं। Because yesterday I met a mining engineer। He is doing a program called Happy Mines। Mining engineer। What is the company is doing Happy Mines? तो अभी ये लोग HR में आएंगे तो कहाँ guarantee? तो अभी क्यों HR में आएं बताओ। He wants to know why you chose HR। So in my last organization where I worked, I realized that the kind of Impact that happy and the positive employees bring in the organization is really uh, important. That's important, but why did you do that job? Because I wanted to You want to see, to she likes point. doing that job. Making <laughs> others happy, she likes doing that. Good question. 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 Twenty बता दिया हमने, बीस बता दिया, उसके अलावा कुछ बताना तो कम नहीं, बीस बता दिया, ये अगर क्वालिटी वन तो रहा, लिसनिंग स्किल, यू डिड लिसन, आई डिड लिसन, तो वो तो लिसन, लास्ट क्वेश्चन, बिकॉज़ ऑर्गेनाइजर सेट, सेट टुडे ईआई, ईआई एस एस बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट एस आईक्यू, सो how EI is going to play a key role in IR? Okay. EI, does EI have a role in ER? EI is employee relation. EI is the emotional relation. Is it? Can you play an important role? Yes, sir. Yes, an important role. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, next question. Last question. Last question. Sorry. Last question. Yeah, it's a very good thing. What do you expect from non-HR means and not anti-HR? They are in other departments. How do you think non-HR and anti-HR? Other departments. Non-HR means other departments. What do you expect from them? Yeah, good question. What do you expect from them? They should cooperate in people initiatives. Any other? Very good question. Be communicative, problems open. Yeah, be communicative, be open, be transparent. Huh? Okay, that's good. Um, as I already mentioned, that within the culture, it's not only just the HR's job. Yeah. So they should also be so that. All of you are people managers. And implement people practices. Be friendly. Everything you should do. See, every employee asks for only two things. Can I say that? Only two things, three things. Grace, space. That's all. If the manager understands this, employee needs only three things: grace, space, and peace. Yeah, we just shanti do not get. Shanti me. So if you can understand, we want all people in all departments to recognize this need. Okay, right? Finish, finish. Okay. Thank you so much. All the questions answered. Now you will clap for them. How you clap? More this way. More this way. Clap has to be better than your neighbor's clap. The clap has to be better than your neighbor's clap so that you get energy, hunger, so that you enjoy the lunch. Okay? So the clap, the characteristic of the clap is it has to be faster, louder, and longer than the neighbor's clap. Faster, louder, longer. Clap for the parents.
If you like somebody, say, I like you. Not like father. Father said, I like you, but I didn't express. Mother expressed, but 13 times a day. And who express? That's what they say. When you say louder, longer, faster, sustainability, immediacy. Uh, and then people should recognize that you are appreciating them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you so much. I have rarely seen a standing ovation to a student panel. Normally, the students stand up and the audience gives a sitting ovation. But it's not that it's outstanding. An outstanding way of recognizing their contribution, then you have motivated them, you have encouraged them, inspired them. All of them will come to the corporate world and make it and make a mark, give an as, and succeed as great human relations manager. Thank you so much. Over to the audience. Thank you so much, everyone. What an amazing session. Thank you so much.
So thank you. Uh, we uh, come to the end of the session for delegates. Uh, and before I end, I would like to say that uh, there will be a lunch. After lunch, the student and faculty are requested to stay back because one of the important part of this uh, today's session is the mentoring for students. And that's why we have 125 students from 7 8 colleges which have come today to benefit from the session. And for that, I request uh, Salil Lal, Dhan Rakshit, Lipika, if you can stay back for some time after lunch. Ratan, Varindar Verma San, if you can stay back after the lunch so that the student community can benefit from the mentoring session. That will be a quick 30 40 minutes. Even Anil, if you can stay back for the students, so that would be great. Of course, the Diki Sam and Mr. Rajiv Dubey all will be there, uh, even Mr. Diki Rao. And before I end, I would like to thank all the uh, audience which came today. And this was something uh, we never expected that we will have more than 300 people turning out today. And this is highly commendable. And this is after the pandemic that we have gone physical. So my compliment and thanks to uh, first of all NHRDN which uh, really helped us. Maruti Suzuki which has always been sponsoring our program and of course XISS Ranchi which has been uh, dead supporter for our program. And I would also like to specially thank everybody who worked behind uh, the scene to make this uh, possible of course. A special thanks to Siddiqui sir and Nipiro sir, Dwarka sir who have helped us in putting open time to make this uh, program successful today and of course behind the scene we have people like team like Lardinji and Christian and Saurav everybody put in hard work to ensure that the program today is a success so thanks a lot and this is a rotational program so definitely this is going to continue we have reached 10 years this time and 10 years display of the pictures of 10 years is outside in the reception area. Those who have not seen, I would definitely request them to go and at least click a picture there. And we have also this video which we will be uploading on the website. So the website of the trust is avnishdev.com. So all pictures, all details are there on the site. And our book which we have launched today will be available online as I said on Amazon and Flipkart and many other uh, app deals. So it will be available online and it will be available in various stores, almost 1500 stores across the country. So please benefit from that book. The proceeds of the book will go for charitable work of the trust. So thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thanks a lot. Please join for the lunch. Thanks a lot.
चेयरमैन आरोपी से जुटी है मेरे नाम जो जैसे कहने चाहिए आयु का एमडीए सीईओ आरोपी से जुटी है मेरे नाम जो पद्मश्री देव डॉक्टर प्रीतम से मिस्टर एस वाई सी सीईओ को एचआर आईटी फाइनेंस एंड सीईओएस आरोपी से जुटी है मेरे नाम जो एंड ऑल द मेंट मेंबर्स ऑफ द इंडस्ट्री ग्रेस दी ओकेशन Industrial relations are the changing business environment. Let us not put ourselves before others. Let others come before us. And I think if everybody does that, then everybody is going to benefit, and we will become a much better society. Moving on to the third lecture of the event, which was held at Mumbai in 2013. It was witnessed by the stalwarts of the Indian industrial landscape, Mr. Rajiv Dubey, Group President Mahindra and Mahindra, Dr. Arvind Agarwal, Mr. Yogi Sena, and others. The deliberations of the lecture were unique, and we arrived at their insights on repositioning industrial relations in the new India. Industrial relations. Has to be given the stature of a critical business model. It has to enter into the business excellence models that many companies have. The wheels of time turn, and the industry again came together to stand in solidarity for the fourth of each day Memorial Lecture at Chennai in 2016. Mr. B. Sansan. President of Black Glass and Soda, Singh Dubey, and Mr. S. Parthasarthi, Rani Dubey, gave the keynote address. Other celebrated members of the industry, such as Mr. Pramod Mahar, deliberated about forecasting the ER challenges of 2020. But more than anything else, digital will enable us to connect, collaborate with our employees deeply. The journey of thoughtful reflection continued with the fifth memorial lecture, which was held at Hyderabad in 2017. Valued members of the Indian industrial landscape, like Mr. Satish Sharma, President ABMEA, Apollo Tires, Mr. Ashok Nareja, President Shreedam Christian, and Prince Limited, and others, graced the occasion with their presence and reflected about the real HR of IR. The sixth of these days, the more adventure, which was held at Kolkata in 2018, saw the emergence of a very pertinent topic that was a cause of concern. For the HR fraternity, respected members of the industry like Mr. P. Varkar, non-executive chairman Lakshmi Swetlal, Mr. R. Shridhar, executive vice president HR ITC Group, and others, raised the occasion with their presence and marked over realigning ER strategy for sustained manufacturing excellence. HR professionals. Please do, do not do something which is nice to do it, rather than which has got some purpose and aligns with your business strategy. The year 2019 saw policymakers debating on how to give an impetus to manufacturing in India and make India a global manufacturing hub. On the same night, the theme of the seventh of each day of the Moral Lecture. Was held at Pune in 2009. Respected members of the Indian industrial landscape, like Mr. Manoj Kolhap, Managing Director, Imperial India Limited; Mr. Nirmal Kumar Mitra, CEO, UNO India Group, and others, raised the occasion with their trusts and contributed on the theme: Make in India through excellence in manufacturing and Industry 4.0. But the word is make in India to make quality in India, reach to a level of excellence so that we can become globally competitive. During the years 2020 and 2021, the entire world was plagued by COVID. The economic and social disruption caused by the pandemic is devastating. 
It underlined the importance of health and well-being and the need to understand contemporary global challenges. During the eighth lecture, humanities like Mr. R.C. Bhargav, Chairman Maruti Suzuki, Mr. Kenichi Arjuna, MD and CEO Maruti Suzuki, Mr. T. N. Narendra, MD and CEO Tata Steel, Mr. S. Y. Siddhi, Executive Advisor Maruti Suzuki, and others came together virtually and deliberated on the theme Building Progressive Employee Relations for Competitive Advantage. The ninth of each day memorial lecture was also held virtually. Mr. Suresh Narayan, Chairman and MD SA India Limited, Dr. Santrupta Mishra, CEO of Birla Power, Director of Birla Power, Mr. Rajesh Member of Executive Board of Maruti Suzuki India Limited, and many other eminent leaders deliberated on the topic, redefining ER strategy with focus on employee well being. We launched our research on 18th July 2000 in a horror second incident of industrial violence. So, careers spanning 28 years, companies and work for companies like Sitchers, BES, Samsung, and Microsoft. In all these organizations, he was considered a man of courage and conviction. I am proud and blessed to have been part of his life. For whatever time God had for me to pass. Losing your patience is bad for the organization. The most important one was the realization that each one of us suffer some measure of adversity in our life. It is how you deal with it is what defines you. After this incident, I had a choice. I could choose to live a life of anger, resentment, and bitterness, but instead I chose to let go and turn this body into something positive. And hence the Agni Stay Memorial Trust started. Through the activities of the Trust, we are now honoring Agni's memory in small and meaningful ways. I would also like to mention the commitment and commitment of the Republic of who takes time out from his busy schedule to visit us every year to pay homage to a village from 1869. For the pain of the village will never go away. But this simple gesture for the poverty helps you feel secure and connected to the community. With his passion and perseverance, a village proved to be an inspiration for all those around him. He was someone who had the courage, tenacity, and the strength of character to preserve the cause of HR and remain by the side of his values till the end. The HR team truly impresses his presence and the energy he brought along. He rests in our hearts and has our respect for the kind of person he was and the values he encompass. Avneesh Kumar Dev, you are and will always be truly best. Yeah. 
graduated from the Xavier Institute of Social Service. Amrish began his professional career with Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in the year 1984, followed by a five-year stint at Bharat Electronics Limited. Those were the days he found the woman of his dreams, Sukarna, and they turned them out on 27th January 1995. The supportive husband was now also the loving and caring father of a beautiful boy, Akhude. An illustrious career continued and spanned through various organizations and led him to the Human Resource Department of Maruti Suzuki India Limited in June 2010. Avnish was a man of substance who ideally balanced his personal and professional life and was an absolute joy to be around. However, our personal and professional lives are constantly being hit by adversities. Most of the time, what happens is not under our control. But how we react to the situation, how we adapt, and how we act depends on us. The Manaki Suzuki XISS of Nish Kumar Dev Trust is the outcome of the aftermath of one of the biggest adversities in the Indian industrial landscape. The labor unrest of July 2012 shook up the industrial society. To stand with the severe strain without breaking is the real test of unity, and the entire HR fraternity stood the test of time by coming together to commemorate the memory of a very treasured member, Sri Avnish Kumar Dev. An MOU was signed between Maruti Suzuki and XISS on 26 November 2012 at New Delhi and thereafter, a trust known as Maruti Suzuki XISS of Nishkumar Dev Memorial Trust was formed in the memory of Sri of Nishkumar Dev and was formally registered on 10th June 2013 at Franchi. The vision and purpose of the trust is to establish and operate a scholarship scheme. And each year, scholarships are offered to three and three students from XISS Rachi HR faculty to organize and conduct an Avnish Day Memorial Lecture each year to establish, promote, set up, run, maintain, assist, and train at vocational centers. Organized lectures, activities, and shows for the cause of HR and allied subjects. The trust decided to organize a beach day for oral lecture on a rotational vocation principle every year. The vision behind the lectures is to build industrial relations capability by bringing together on a single unified platform, leading academicians, HR thought leaders, and HR student community to strengthen ER-IR capability building across the country. This initiative of Maruti Suzuki is jointly organized along with NHRBN since 2013. The first Avnish Day Memorial Lecture was organized at XISS Ranchi in 2013 with the support of Maruti, XISS, and NHRDM. This was attended by senior HR fraternity from across the country and students from various business groups. Sri Ramesh Prasad, father of late Sri Avnish Kumar Dev, Srimati Suparna Prasad, wife of late Sri Avnish Kumar Dev, and close relatives of late Sri Avnish Kumar Dev joined for the first memorial lecture to pay homage to their dearest family member. Dignitaries like Mr. K. R. Kumar, Chief Human Resource Officer, ICICI Bank, Mr. Manas Panda, Executive Director, HR, Say, Mr. Anand Nadi, Executive Vice President, HR, ICC Limited, Mr. P. Vartana, Advisor, Group Human Capital, Max India, and Father Alex Ekta SJ, Director XISS Ranchi, joined to speak about building world class organizations. 
The second of these day memorial lecture was held at Delhi in 2014. Dignitaries like Mr. R. C. Bhadra, Chairman of Bharati Suzuki India Limited, Mr. Kenichi Aintaro, MD and CEO of Bharati Suzuki India Limited, Padmashri Great Dr. Pritam Singh, Mr. S. Y. C. D. E. C. O. O. H. R. I. T. Finance and C. O. S. Bharati Suzuki India Limited, and other eminent members of the industry raised the air with their presence and spoke about industrial relations with the changing business environment. Let us support ourselves in the world of others. Let others come to us. And let them take a look at us. Let everybody get a good idea of our industrial societies. Moving on to the third lecture of the industry, which was held at Mumbai in 2013, it was witnessed by the stalwarts of the Indian industrial landscape, Mr. Rajiv Dubey, Dr. Ben Mahindra and Mahindra, Dr. Alvin Agar, Mr. Yogi Sina and others. The deliberations of the lecture were unique, and the arrived at their assistance on repositioning the industrial relations in the Indian Industrial relations has to be given the stature of a critical business process. It has to enter into the business excellence models that many companies have. We breathe the fine term, and the industry again came together to stand in solidarity for the fourth of each day of Royal Lecture at Chennai in 2016. Mr. B. Sansan, President of Black Glass and Soda, St. Gouvet, and Mr. S. Parkasati, Ronnie Buddha, gave the keynote address. Other celebrated members of the industry, such as Mr. Pramod Mahat, deliberated about forecasting the ER challenges of 2020. But more than anything else, digital enables us to connect, collaborate with our employees deeply. The journey of thoughtful reflection continued with the fifth memorial lecture, which was held at Hyderabad in 2017. Valued members of the Indian industrial landscape, like Mr. Satish Sharma, President APMEA, Apollo Tires, Mr. Ashok Tanejo, President Sridhar Pistons and Grace Limited, and others, graced the occasion with their presence and reflected about the real HR of fire. Actually, I also find my own mind is going to be more if not only the past. Then it's again, you see, the past is going to be one of the goals. And if you demand for a higher self-use, The sixth of each day memorial lecture, which was held at Kolkata in 2018, saw the emergence of a very burgeoning talk that was cause of concern for the HR fraternity. Respected members of the industry like Mr. P. Dwarkana, non-executive chairman of Glaxo Smith Klein, Mr. R. Sheena, executive vice president HR ITC Group, and others, grace the occasion with their presence and Moldova realigning ER strategy for sustained manufacturing excellence. In child professionals, please do, do not do something which is nice to do it rather than which has got some purpose and aligns with your business strategy. The year 2019 saw policy makers debating on how to give an impetus to manufacturing in India and make India a global manufacturing hub. On the same hub, the theme of the 7th of Niche Day Memorial Lecture was held at Pune in 2019. Respected members of the Indian industrial landscape, like Mr. Manoj Kolha, Managing Director, Gabriel India Limited, Mr. Nirmal Kumar Mitra, CEO, UNO India Group, and others, raised the occasion for their presence and contemplated of the theme, Make it India through excellence in manufacturing. Industries open to promote this make in India to make quality in India, reach to a level of excellence so that we can become globally competitive. During the years 2020 and 2021, 
the entire world is played by COVID. The economic and social disruption caused by the pandemic is devastating. It underlined the importance of the power bank and the need to look at contemporary global challenges. During the 8th election, the universities like Mr. Arsene Parker, Chairman Arun Suzuki, Mr. Kenichi Aikam, LDM CEO Arun Suzuki, Mr. T.D. Narendra, LDM CEO Tata Steel, Mr. S.Y. Siddiqui, Executive Advisor Arun Suzuki, came together virtually and deliberated on the theme Building Progressive Employee Relations for Competitive Advantage. The ninth of each day of the Bombay lecture was also held virtually. Mr. Suresh Narayan, Chairman of the MD, Eslam Gallagher, Dr. Sansu Kamesh, CEO of the Mandal, Director of the Mandal, Mr. Rajesh Shukla, Member of the Executive Board, Arun Sisuki, Implemented, and many other eminent leaders deliberated on the topic, redefining Neon strategy with focus on employee wealth.
ठीक है ऐसा कोई काम नहीं आप अपना बैकग्राउंड लगा के छोड़ देना पर साउंड चलना चाहिए लेवल की जरूरत नहीं है हैंड माइक चलेगा अगर कम पड़ेगा तो लेवल पकड़ा देना क्योंकि मेरे ख्याल से छः आठ टेबल लगते टेबल वो उस हिसाब से लगा रहे हैं ना अपने बच्चों के हिसाब कितने हमारे पास पाँच है चार है चार है ठीक है चार ले लिए ठीक है सर कह रहे हैं अपडेट कर लेंगे कोई नहीं पर तुम अपने बाकी का प्यार तो अगर आप मेरे को पाँच मिनट का टाइम देंगे ना तो मैं दो महीने डाल तो जैसे पोडियम पे रखे ना बीच में सेंटर में ऐसे में रखवा लेता हूँ नहीं तो अकॉर्डलेस है अकॉर्डलेस चलने चाहिए बस चार चेक तो तुमने सुबह भी किया था खुद ठीक है ठीक है ना यहाँ पर वो मेरा पॉइंट यही है कि यहाँ पर वो चलेगा ठीक है ना और यहाँ पे तुम अपना बैकड्रॉप डाल देना साउंड बराबर चलना चाहिए बस ठीक है ना
Mr. B. Wakana, advisor, Blue Human Capital, Max India, and Father Alex Ekra Estro, director, XISS Raj, joined to speak about building world class organizations. The second of each day memorial lecture was held at Delhi in 2014. Dignitaries like Mr. Parsi Bhatta, Chairman Maruti Suzuki India Limited, Mr. Kenji Ayuka, MD and CEO of Maruti Suzuki India Limited, Padma Shri Dr. Pritam Mr. SYC BD, COO, HR, IT, Finance and COS, Maruti Suzuki India Limited, and other eminent members of the industry raised the occasion for their presence and spoke about industrial relations and the changing business environment. Moving on to the third lecture of the edition, which was held at Mumbai in 2013, it was witnessed by the stalwarts of the Indian industrial landscape, Mr. Rajiv Dubey, Duke of Ben Mahindra and Mahindra, Dr. Arvind Akhtar, Mr. Yogi Sena, and others. The deliberations of the lecture were unique, and we arrived at their insights on repositioning industrial relations in the world. Industrial relations has to be given the state of the critical business model. It has to enter into the business excellence models that the many companies have. The wheels of time turn, and the industry again came together to stand in solidarity for the fourth of each day of Morgan Lecture at Chennai in 2016. Mr. B. Sansan, President of Black Glass and Soda, St. Robert, and Mr. S. Vatsasati, Rani Guru, gave the keynote address. Other celebrated members of the industry, such as Mr. Pramod Mahatma, deliberated about forecasting the ER challenges of 2020. But more than anything else, digital enables us to connect to our trade with our employees. And the journey of thoughtful reflection continued from the fifth Memorial Lecture, which was held at the end of our in 2017. Mr. Sadish Sharma, President ABMEA, Apollo Times, Mr. Ashok Panija, President Sri Ram Christians and British Limited, and others, raised the occasions of their presence and reflected on the real nature of the fire. The sixth of each day for a lecture, which was held at Kolkata in 2018, saw the emergence of a very pertinent topic and was also concerned for the HR fraternity. Respected members of the industry like Mr. P. Varkan, non executive chairman of the Lancer Street World, Mr. R. Shree, Executive Vice President HR ITC Group, and others, raised the occasion with their presence and marked over realigning ER strategy for sustained manufacturing excellence. HR professionals, please do not do something which is nice to do it, rather than which has got some purpose and it aligns with your business strategy. The year 2019 saw policy makers debating on how to give an impetus to manufacturing in India and make India a global manufacturing hub. On the same line, the theme of the seventh of each day of the moral lecture was held at Pune in 2019. Respected members of the Indian industrial landscape, like Mr. Manoj Kohan, Managing Director of the Indian Limited, Mr. Mehta Kumar Rinda, CEO of UNO MW, and others, raised the occasion for their crisis and contemplated the fear 
कमांड टैप दबाना ना कमांड और टैप नहीं ये ये कमांड बटन दबा के टैप बटन दबा दे कमांड कमांड और टैप और एक बार दबाना दो बार टैप दबाना जूम जूम करके इसमें डाल दीजिए
लाइट की जरूरत नहीं है वायर हटाकर वो घूम कर अच्छे से रिकॉर्ड करें ठीक है हाँ हाँ मेरे को वो सर ने भी दी तो करवा दी उनको उनको बोल दी यहाँ से वो 